All right, we are live. No way. May, are you ready for greatness? Always. I was born Always. ready for greatness. Wonderful. <laughs> Welcome, everybody. So we are doing a continuation of last week's live stream, which was this master copy of a sergeant of the Wyndham sisters. Mm -hmm. So thank you for joining us for round two of this. May is currently mixing her colors, <laughs> figuring things out. We uh, normally start um, at 7 p.m., but we started at 8 p.m. because May actually was at this fun event. Mm -hmm. um, we actually didn't talk about this. Do you want to talk about it? What yeah, happened? I'm okay. very happy Where to were talk you about it. Where were you? Yeah, I was in Princeton. Um, a, a cafe there actually was um, at like a little opening event to showcase some of my work that they were hanging over there. So it was really fun. I invited a bunch of my friends from from college and from high school there around, and I invited Kevin as well. So a bunch of my friends got to like meet each other across circles and also meet Kevin, so that was fun. Yeah, it was very nice. enjoyable. Mm -hmm. um, they had like a featured like student artist thing and then they also had a bunch of like adult artists um, who were like the, I guess, main show in the gallery area, like upstairs, gallery slash restaurant. Um, and so I had like the whole downstairs area to myself, which was like nice. And then I met oh, cool. like, yeah, and then I met the other artists who were there um, with the upstairs section. They actually all like lived together in like this little I forgot what they call it. It's like an artist's something, collective, some, something of that nature. Um, and they all like live together in uh, Lambertville. And they do like little little shows there as well. So it was cool. I got to talk to some of them. Um, yeah. Nice. Yeah. Which paintings did you have there? Um, I had Ascendance in there, which is like, it's like two years old. I think that's kind of funny. Um, yeah, um, it was like, it's my first painting with wings in it. <laughs> um, the beginning of a long lasting legacy. <laughs> but it's like, I don't know if you have it, but it's, it? it's, like, it's like a sunset in the background above the clouds. And it's like this girl going like oh. this or something. And there's like, mm. she has like wings and she's yeah. on like this metal lotus. It's very Let me cool. look. Oops. It's in the Google Drive folder. Is it? Uh, I'm not seeing it in our little portfolio that we set up. So maybe yeah. I can find it later. Yeah. Um, I had that one. Had the one from the first live stream sessions that we did, like the, the winged, one winged figure that I decided to name Afterthought. That was in there. Oh, cool. Um, yeah, my portrait of Kevin was in there too, the one where he looks like Batman. Um, <laughs> um, what else did I have? I had that master copy of um, the St. George painting, the one that like started all the art therapy paintings. <laughs> Um, that I made this summer in like one sitting. Um, hmm. What else did I have? So none of, well, I guess sorry for everyone, just for everyone knows, none mm -hmm. of these ones that I'm showing right now were in. So I did not properly prepare. Actually, I didn't, just learning this information from May now. Yeah, um, sorry. So I'll, I'll try to pull up some new <laughs> images mm -hmm. for everybody to see what they were. I think you do have one of them. Um, it was the one I submitted to the Art Renewal Center. It was like the aqua one where the girl's like. Oh. Yes. Yeah, that one's there. Right. Mm -hmm. Cool. And this one here. I had my painting of the jester, which is one of the evolve images. So. Oh, okay. So this one as well. Yeah, and I had a painting of the Buddha as well, also one of the evolve images. But it's from like a long time ago, so I don't okay. have a picture yeah, of I don't it. Know that one. Yeah. Cool. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. All right, and so yeah, so thank you, May, for sharing that. Of course, your work is awesome. For those of you, anyone who's new here and wondering what in the world's going on. Um, <laughs> May is an apprentice of Kevin Murphy, who is the founder of Evolve Artists. And so, um, yeah, what is Evolve? Evolve, we do, we help people get to pro level art skills in about one year's time. So all of these skills that you're seeing from May here um, was through her apprenticeship with Kevin. And so Evolve is an online version of this kind of training and these results, really. And uh, if you're interested, we actually were doing a live webinar two Tuesdays from now, which would be October fourth. Uh, October fourth. Thank you. <laughs> and uh, let me provide the link. This is for really for anybody, um, whether you're a student and you're interested, or if you are interested in Evolve, or even if you're not interested in Evolve, but really you want to make your first thousand dollars in art. We're going to be giving you a whole live webinar training about that. 
and um, that'll be hosted by myself. We'll be having a guest on there and uh, someone who used that, that approach to kickstart her career. And uh, who knows, maybe you've already seen some ads about it. So I'm going to grab that link for everybody. I've seen ads about it. <laughs> you have? <laughs> yeah, which I think is pretty cute. <laughs> pretty cute. Yeah, I'm like, hey, I know that guy. <laughs> like, yeah, well, Daniel. I try, you know. We want to want to reach Yeah, it's nice. reach the people. <laughs> um, yeah, and also if you just look in the um, you look into the descriptions of or the description of this live stream, you'll see all the links there. You'll see other evolved content. <laughs> yeah, Eric said Eric Hunt said, I've seen the ads for sure. <laughs> yeah, we, we put them out there. Um, Want to spread the word. It's kind of, yeah, it's nice. Um, so yeah, you can just go down to the link in the descriptions or you can click on the link I just shared here and uh, you can sign up for the webinar. Again, it's totally free and you can ask us any questions that you have. So if you're interested at all in just seeing like, hmm, maybe I could make some money doing what I love. Sounds kind of nice. And... Uh, you can join us there. We'll also be talking about the Evolve program and sharing with people what we're all about and what we're doing. And, and yeah. All right, there's my plug. So <laughs> back to you, May. Back to me. Looks like you've been working away here with these this palette. Yeah, I've been mixing. So um, yeah, the painting as you see it now, it's like it's very much kind of like I could leave it like this and just call it like a very loose. Um, like gestural study, but we decided to try to finish it, get it closer to something more refined. But um, in the way it is, it's like kind of hard to work with. There's no like clearly unfinished part. It's just everything's kind of yeah, it's like own state. Um, and so I think the overall goal, me and uh, me and Daniel were just talking about how to move this forward in like a very in like a more structured and overall kind of way. Um, and so we're going to try to, or <laughs> I'm going to try to um, kind of unify the lights and the shadows a bit better. So it's not just like shapes, it's more like forms, if that makes sense. Um, so yeah, we're going to be working with some bigger shapes first um, and then make the painting look a little more structured and then maybe work on top with some details if I feel like it. <laughs> but I think the big part is um, getting the structure down so you can kind of read like the dress a bit better, the dresses and like their bodies and their cushions and how they're all interacting. Mm -hmm. So, right. So, so mm -hmm. to help just explain that, while May is working here. Um, so if you look at the, if you can kind of just look look at the painting as as it is, and then the reference in the top left corner. If you kind of squint your eyes a little bit, you might see some areas where like some areas kind of have like a darker section, like a shadow. So if you kind of look, where's the light? Where's the shadow? And look at the reference in that way. And if you compare that to the painting, the painting right now has a lot of information, awesome, fun, loose strokes that May was, she's just, you know, communicating, okay, she's seeing the information, she wants to capture it. But now there's room to just revisit the overall structure. And so she's going to be looking back a bit more and uh, she'll just be blocking in those overall shadows, and we're expecting that <laughs> um, it'll have a, a more powerful impact from a distance. Yeah. It's nice when you look at this up close, it has a really nice feel to it, but we're kind of going for a more of an impact from a distance, and that's where these bulk shapes and these bulk impressions really happen. Mm -hmm. What is the purple color that you have on your palette? This one? Uh, that one, or maybe she's referring to the one at the top. This one? Yeah. Um, that's a magenta, I believe. Um, this is magenta and brown, like this burnt umber color. There might be some green in there, I forget. <laughs> yeah. Cool. Yeah, okay, I think. In a true evolve tradition, we start with the shadows and then <laughs> we move on to the lights. <laughs> so I'm going to start with kind of blocking in the shadows as best I can, unifying some of those shapes. So you know, these are all, this little arc, I guess, is all like kind of lights. These are shadows. These are obviously shadows. Um, this is an extreme light, probably going to be up in here. Um, yeah, we'll probably mix a lot along the way. We'll see how it goes. So. All right. All right.
right. There we go. You can see I'm like thinning down the paint a little because like I don't want it to be like super opaque and cover everything I've done, um, like all the detail work. But I do want it to like still be visually impactful, but not like overwhelming. If that makes sense. I'm gonna mix that with some of this blue. Well, it's not blue, it's relatively blue, huh? um, but it's more like gray, because um, there's like a lot of kind of iridescence in this one sister's dress. So it's like got a lot of warms and cools in there, even in the shadows, but they're like very similar in value as you can probably tell. So it won't like disrupt the harmony really of that one shadow shape. At least that's my thinking. <laughs> And I'm kind of blending, blending it with what's down already, um, like the yellow, the relative yellow that I just put down. So. Awesome. Yeah, it's already having a much stronger impression. Yay. Yay. That's what we want. It's working. <laughs> it's nice when you kind of, you know, have a little plan and <laughs> you start implementing the plan and it comes out nice. Yes. It's nice when your intents work. <laughs> yeah, so we're off to a good start. And <laughs> while we're watching, my new favorite thing for our live streams. Let me guess. <laughs> now you go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> no, you, you can do it this time if you want. <laughs> oh, nah, you can do it. No, you, okay. <laughs> you, enjoy, you enjoy it more, I think. So All right. <clears throat> <laughs> if you had to describe <laughs> how you're feeling at this present moment, Using an old Holland oil paint tube, what would it be? And I'm going to drop in a link. Um, oh, I just remembered these. This might not work. Uh, let's see. Oh, okay, it worked. Yay. I'm going to drop in a link here. You can click on that link and you can kind of see some of the old Holland colors. And let me know how you're feeling. Uh, in terms of a color. For me, I'm feeling, as I'm looking at this, the Golden Baroque Red, C136. Um, I don't normally feel red. I'm a very you know, calm, peaceful, head in the clouds kind of a person. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, I'm, I've been feeling a bit of red. Um, I read a book last night, I couldn't put it down. And I went to bed at 4 a.m. because I, <laughs> I had to finish it. Um, but it's actually an incredible story of um, some of the, the hardships that went down in the, um, at Kabul airport with the, Afghan, the Afghanistan situation with the U.S. Mm -hmm. and the U.S. military pulling out. And um, super hard stuff to read about but also it was an incredible story because um, the whole story was about trying to help and get um, special interest Afghan people out of that city and get them to safety and my brother was one of the people who helped and he was in this story oh wow I didn't know that. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, the book is called Operation Pineapple Express. It's right there on Amazon for anybody to read if they're interested. But it was just, uh, yeah, it was a lot, a lot to process. It's definitely a heavy book, so be warned. Um, but it was just a really, really cool... Um, yeah, you know, just people just trying to help and uh, turn a, a really bad situation into 
saving some people's lives or the, the lives that they could. And uh, yeah, it's just really, really incredible. So I'm feeling a bit red, you know. Um, just the, the, the passion of it, the, the severity of the whole situation. And uh, it's definitely inspired me to just be more thoughtful about how, like as simple as it is, it's just like, um, I want to be, I want to be, be the kind of person who would do that for others, you know, to kind of put your life down on the line to try to help other people. And uh, in my cushy, civilized life, that <laughs> looks very different, but it, it happens in small ways, and it's just really inspiring. So I feel kind of motivated, invigorated. So yeah, that's my color. <laughs> we got um, from Carrie, we got a turquoise blue deep, B265, as the weather is nice here. Sun through my studio window, and I'm thinking of a trip to the beach soon. Wow, that's awesome. Take me. <laughs> yeah, it's it's dark over at our part of the world. It's getting cold. I don't yeah. like it. <laughs> but that's a, it's a nice color. Eric Hunt said, give me that sweet C268 cobalt green. <laughs> Eric, as we know, loves the color green. So he's going cobalt. Did we learned wonderful. this last year. Uh, last, like yep. last year. Last live stream. Last live stream, yeah. He says, I felt amazing all day. Aww. And Phoebe said B259, blue-gray. Hmm. No explanation. Just blue-gray. Blue-gray is blue-gray. It's a very nonchalant color. Blue-gray could be like so many things, you know? Mm -hmm. uh -huh. Phoebe said I'm sleepy. <laughs> Understandable. Not feeling very lively, hello. <laughs> That's totally fine. Still, it's a very yeah. you know calming color, just looking at that one. Um, Judy Hartford said, I'm excited. Chev Red Light B22. Excited? About what? What do you have going on? What's so cool? <clears throat> oh, wow. That is, that is a very exciting color. It starts off like this nice warm red, and then as it gets lighter, it starts to get... More pink. It like escalates. <laughs> yeah. That's fun. Debbie Roquetta said yellow green. Let's find that one. I'm gonna become a master of this chart, guys. <laughs> but right now New Year's resolutions. Ooh, master wow. Level. Yeah, that's that is a green. That's the greeniest of, of greens. I always feel like I'm missing out on so much whenever you do this. <laughs> I have no idea what any of these look like. Well actually Next week, it it appears that May will be <laughs> May and I will be switching places. True. So, for those of you who've been waiting and waiting and waiting to see Daniel Folta get on camera <laughs> and paint live, you will see it next week. Get your wishes granted, people. What's that? Get your wishes granted, people. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> Yeah, it should be a good time. And, uh, oh, nice. Judy Hartford, Hartford, sorry, Hartford, said, excited to see how you finish this painting. Thank you. Me too. So, May, <laughs> she is like this electric red color. That's how excited she is to see you <gasps> finish this painting. It's and a lot to of see pressure, but okay. Uh, I'll deliver. And Carrie just asks, what subject are you painting? So this is a master copy of the Wyndham sisters. Maybe she's asking about you. Oh, oh, for me. Probably. Right, that it's, makes sense. That's my assumption. <laughs> yeah, so I will be painting a pet portrait of this dog that lived in our house and um, unfortunately at two years old just passed away suddenly this week. Oh, at two? Mm -hmm. Oh no, do you know what happened? Or um, just got just, really sick and oh. couldn't pull through. I'm sorry. Um, yeah, pretty devastating. <clears throat> um, not going to cry on the live stream, but super, yeah, just a big shock for us. But um, we will be, you know, celebrating that life. It's, uh, it's not going to be a dreary time. 
next week for the live stream. And I'll be painting Carter. Actually, Carter is, um, he was in one of our YouTube videos. Hmm. Let me grab the link for that if you're curious to see what he looks like. Just a really, really sweet guy. So if you click on that link, um, and I think it's like the very opening scene, I'm uh, sitting there with, with good old Carter. Yeah, he's a great, great, beautiful dog, and one of the boys <laughs> is a real champ. So yeah, so it'll be, it'll be nice to be able to paint him and kind of honor just that time and immortalize it. Tim Johnson said, she makes it look so easy. <laughs> Thank you, I guess. <laughs> but yeah, just to say, like, again, it's, it, there's a sad circumstance, but it's also something that we can be grateful for. And uh, so it's going to be a life, still a lighthearted time and a, just an appreciative time of our pets and what they mean for our lives. It's also going to be a pretty simple painting um, I think it's going to be a three by three inches oh, on a little wow. cube, <laughs> just like a really nice little thing. Right. Um, my friend who's the owner, just think that'd be his style. It'd be nice and easy to be on his work desk and, mm -hmm. um, just be kind of a nice thing. So that's what we, we're going with. Yeah, Phoebe, he was. Yeah, man, you're making great strides already with this painting. I forget what it looked like before, so it's great. <laughs> <laughs> um, does this make too much sound like when I go like that? Or... Um, I can't hear it because, okay. like, I don't have headphones in. Okay. I can't hear our, ourselves speaking. Okay. Well, I'm just going to take it off just in case. Cool. I, like, Thank just you. started noticing it, and I was like, hmm. That might not be the most enjoyable. Okay, there we go. And we're jangling for you guys. <laughs> oh, that is interesting information. Eric just shared that he got uh, jebated. Jebated, yeah. Is that a word? <laughs> yeah. It is? Oh. Uh, it's like an internet word. It's not like in the dictionary. Oh, okay. Wait, I guess what, he got... How'd you get jebated? Jettisoned away or something. Um, so he, he, clicked, he clicked the link that I shared, and then it navigated him away from the stream, so... Oh, oh I um, guess it's like one of those... Yeah, so I guess for everyone, uh, when you click on these links, I think if you control click, maybe you, it'll open up but still go to another tab and then you can still hear us talking while you're looking at whatever links I'm sharing. Mm -hmm. That's a really good thing to be aware of so I can help people out in future streams. Oh, nice. Carrie said, I'm interested in doing a sergeant for one of my master copies in block eight. Love the beauty of them. They are beautiful. Yeah. If you sometimes when I'm bored, like I literally just look up like Sergeant like female portraits and like some of the single figures that he did are just amazing. Um, it's like because back then they all like had such cool clothing, <laughs> um, and like like the reflectiveness of the silk and like all these bunched up like really over the top kind of like dresses and structures and kind of draped over people's shoulders, even like around their shoulders, and just like in these very like loose, like organic ways. It's just like so enjoyable. It's so like energetic to look at. Um, mm -hmm. You don't get as much of that here because they're like all sitting down. So it, it's, it's like inherently a little bit more static. Um, but yeah, I think there's this one, like this lady, she's going like her poses like this. I actually use that as inspiration for a portrait that I'm working on now. But. Um, mm -hmm. Like that pose uh, and that lighting. Um, but I think she's just wearing like a boatload of silk and it's just like pew, in your face. It's so cool. <laughs> it's like what? <laughs> Searching the camera. Ha. Actually, I got you the first time. Oh, really? Yeah, I oh. just wanted you to do it again. <laughs> I'm always trying to catch May just doing stuff like that because that's just a big part of her personality. She just has to express things with her arms. and. I need sound effects and arm gestures, yes. Watch your head there as you're painting. Mm. Thank you. 
I have this like Lil Nas X song stuck in my head, and it's like the theme song for um. This is totally unrelated. I'm just saying things. Uh, for um, fine. for like the League of Legends like um, like world competition, which is like the biggest like esports tournament ever. I don't play video games or like anything. I just really appreciate like the music and art that goes behind it. Um, and it's yeah, the beat's like really really cool. And so like if I randomly start like nodding my head or something, it's probably because that's like playing in my head right mm. now. <laughs> You want to give us a little, little beat? I am not singing for you guys. <laughs> um, maybe little, on little another hum, channel. Perhaps. Maybe that's like a future video where I, <laughs> instead of talking and painting, I'm like singing and painting. That would be crazy. You would lose subscribers. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> I hope not. <laughs> Teaching singing lessons while painting. And I've been told that I'm like a good singer. Um, so I'm like not horribly unconfident about my singing skills, but I wouldn't say I'm like actually confident. I'm just saying I'm not unconfident, <laughs> which I think is a pretty big difference. <laughs> yeah, I'm very talkative today because I was just like with a bunch of people and so my social mode is still like on. So I might just start talking about like random things. Go on. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, I feel like lately with these one-off paintings, I haven't been talking as much because I'm like very, focused on doing stuff like at the easel you know because i'm like there was a time constraint um whatnot um mm. so i haven't been talking as much but yeah this is working for me <laughs> yeah. i tell you eric hunt is really stretching my vocabulary here and i appreciate it immensely what is this man saying? He just okay. said, a picadill is probably the epitome of those types of strange yet interesting garbs from that time. Picadill? A picadill. Now That's I have to such look a this fun up. word. Wow. Let's see what, what this is. Ah, it's the large broad collar. You know, like the Van Dyke portraits. Oh, like the big, like... Yeah, yeah, like that. <laughs> Sorry, I just had to pause and catch you on camera there. <laughs> <laughs> no, you're fine. <laughs> the discs. Yeah, the, the discs. The wheels of cheese. That's what they look like <laughs> to me. Um. <laughs> yeah, I'm very glad that's no longer in style. That'd be so funny. Imagine like getting on like a crowded subway and everyone's just wearing like these big wheels of cheese. <laughs> That'd be horrible. I'm sorry, sir. My wheel of cheese yeah. seems to have bumped you in the... <laughs> snout. <laughs> snout. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like everyone's forgotten like what my personality is like because I haven't talked on stream for like a month. <laughs> uh. Yeah, we're very comfortable now. These art yeah. therapy sessions where we're just painting and having fun, um, just relaxing, you know. Yeah. Hopefully it's relaxing for all of you too. Um, but yeah, I mean, I don't know. If it's just these are barely art therapy in a sense. It's in just the typical like us sense of the word. hanging out. Yeah, <laughs> it's just our excuse to say that we're here to have fun and yeah. relax and not take ourselves too seriously. And yeah, hopefully that's okay with everyone else. Yeah, and I'm just painting on the way. By the way, I made a post. Uh, or sorry, a poll in the chat here, and uh, eighty percent of our audience. Mm -hmm. has not seen a sergeant in person. Whoa. Well, I'm yeah. lucky I live, like, close to New York, so I can see a bunch at the Met. But they are quite stunning. Especially, like, because brushwork is such a big part of his, like, later paintings. Um, seeing those, like, up close, like, the, the straight-up texture is, is very, very different. It's like you can almost envision, like, the decision-making process or, like, how he was like looking at it before putting that down. It's so cool. Mm. Um. Yeah, I remember actually he was in Princeton at the museum there and oh, they had yeah. a sergeant. That's been like under construction. They're actually like expanding it, um, like the facility. Um, that's what the whole construction thing's about. But I think they're opening up soon because they started putting up signs about it. So. Cool, that's awesome. Mm -hmm. But yeah, I remember looking at, so it was this full figure portrait of this woman in a dress Mm -hmm. and the ring that she had on her hand caught my eye mm -hmm. because it looked incredibly realistic. Like one of the most realistic, realistically painted rings I had ever seen. And it was this 
just beautiful, ornate ring. Mm -hmm. And I was just thinking, how in the world? And I step up close to it <laughs> to take a, to just, it's like, I want to see how he did this, how he made this look so real. Yeah. And it was just like gee, these brush strokes that looked like they had gone down in like 15 seconds. Yeah. And I was just stunned. Like it was, yeah. it was like two experiences of the same thing. Yeah. You step back a few feet and you're thinking, oh, this is so realistic. And you step forward and it's like, wait, what am I even looking at? Like yeah. I couldn't even tell where the <laughs> ring began and where it ended mm -hmm. on that hand. But when I stepped back, it, was, it, looked, it looked more real than what a photograph could offer. Yeah. And yet it was painted with these impressionistic strokes. I mean, talk about precision. I love it when... I love it when paintings do that. When you're like looking at it from afar and you're like, holy crap, that is the most realistic thing. You go up close and it's just like splotches in like the perfect way. Yeah. Um, I think um, Washington Crossing the Delaware is also like that, especially with like the ice and the water in the background. Um, just like mm. the, the texture on like the ice, like the broken like ice because the river's frozen. He's just like driving through it. Um, and just like you look at it from afar and you're like, how did he get that insanely precise, like broken texture and like ice is like transparent and translucent and all these things. So, and you go up close and it's just like splotches of like white paint, just like streaked around by like probably the most like aggressive bristle, bristle brush like ever. Mm. And it's like so enjoyable. Uh, I can only imagine how much fun he had when he was painting it, you know? Like, <laughs> <laughs> um. Yeah, <laughs> that's all I have to say. <laughs> yeah, that is probably one of my favorite pieces at the Met. It's and also it's just like huge. It's like a very basic thing to like love about a painting, but it's just like so much larger than I think it's like twice life size or something. At least like my impression of it is just. And the frame is just. Oh as my impressive. god, the frame was like made for the painting, so it's like cannons and flags and like yeah everything. It is so cool. All right, we got some things happening in the chat here. Oh boy. Uh, going back to the Piccadilly, <laughs> um, Eric said it would be perfect if it was to come back in style. Mm -hmm. Kristen really appreciates us, and uh, she said you two are so fun to listen to. So thank you. <laughs> thank you. Um, yeah, it's good to be. It's nice that we can be ourselves. We can just be comfortable and yeah. just talk here. It's pretty awesome. I miss talking at you guys. <laughs> <laughs> Um, Carrie said, this is just like an Evolve homework room or study group. Yes, and actually another plug for Evolve. That's cool. So what is a ho homework room? What's a study group? So we have the, so as, yeah, so Evolve is this online training. We help people get to pro-level skills, and it's this online oil painting course, basically. Um, and it's super awesome. But we, one of the things that we were wrestling with as we were thinking about, okay, if we're going to make this go online, how do we create connection? How do we create a sense of community? And um, this was before COVID, okay? And we got on that video chat game <laughs> like a year or two in advance. On and, the video um, chat grind. What's that? On the video chat grind. That's right, yeah. And so basically we strongly encouraged our students to, it's like, hey, whenever you're working on one of your painting assignments, just set up your laptop next to you turn on the camera and just jump into this room that's always open, anyone can jump into at any time. And so, um, you know, maybe no one's there around, but other times someone pops in and then suddenly you're, you could be talking with a random person from like across the sea. And then the, so that's, those are the homework rooms. And um, since then, that was like when it was just starting. Oh, and it's, it's still like that, but uh, where mm -hmm. it's always open. But then we've also developed these study groups, so where people are interacting with each other and saying, hey, who's going to be in the homework, to, ho homework room? Um, like, let's all get together and just intentionally go at the same time so that we can all just have a good time painting and chatting and talking about our paintings or talking about life or whatever. And um, that's just been a huge thing. And I think we have one of those study groups every single day. So it's just, it's nonstop. It's, it's awesome. Just hearing about that recently was so cool that we had gotten all the way up to one a day. Um, yeah, it's like, a, it's like its own kind of class. And it's all just included in the program. So, <laughs> shameless plug. Gotta love it. Okay, and then let's see. Yellow guy said, painting in the Renaissance era got 
improvement through the enlightening painters. I love painting from the Roman Trojan times, even though Renaissance era beats it. Um, let's see. And then a continuation from that yellow guy said, painting from the Renaissance era proves the modern world started in that time, mixed with the wisdom of the Roman Empire, um, but improved through the Renaissance era in architecture and art. Yeah, I mean, you look at the guys like Leonardo da Vinci and Michelangelo, they invented oil painting. And so they're, they're the founding fathers, so to speak, of everything that we know and we, we've learned so much from them and it's on their shoulders that such incredible art is able to be produced in the world today. Um, oh yes, thank you, Carrie. Um, yes, yeah, somebody earlier was asking if Evolve teaches a la prima in the program. Uh, so, yeah, yeah yes. Um, so, yeah, it's kind of hard. It's like, I guess maybe we don't teach a la prima specifically, but at the same time, it, it happens naturally. And so what I mean by that is we have these painting assignments that, for the most part, are done in one sitting, or could be done in one sitting, which is what a la prima is. And then um, as you go, it's like, it's kind of up to you, right? So you could, you could do the, the assignment in a la prima, or you could do a little bit, and then maybe your life gets in the way, and so you leave it and then come back. Um, so it kind of goes either or, but we don't have like a specific training session on a la prima specifically. Mm -hmm. And uh, so like we, we, we don't have anything that's, that's mirrors what May is doing right now. However, what we do focus on is training that allows, like May's, like, May's never gotten a specific class in all yeah, no. to my knowledge. The first time I did um, all the Prima basically for like a refined painting that wasn't like a still life or something was like on these live streams. Yeah, so, okay, yeah. <laughs> like, <laughs> exactly. So it's just it's just changing the application, yeah, right? Yeah. So sure. um, and just changing the the time to being to thinking. Okay, so I'm going to finish this in one sitting. What does this mean? How do mm -hmm. I have to paint differently as a result? And it, it happens pretty natural naturally. It's kind of like, imagine, so the way, that, the way that we talk about teach our training and Evolve is we teach art like it's a language and you're learning how to express yourself in that language. And uh, visually, right, you're, like, you're expressing yourself visually, taking an idea that's in your, your mind and then representing it on a two-dimensional surface like this painting here. And then, so imagine learning, say, the English language, if we're going to equate that with oil painting. And then after you learn the language, imagine that somebody says, all right, now that you know the language, I want you to give, let's say, an impromptu speech in under two minutes. And here's the, the prompt, go. And there are certain little tips and tricks that you could learn to help you do something like that but you still have the, the basics, the bare bones with which to express and communicate. And then now you're just under the pressure of doing it faster and working more quickly. Maybe you um, decide to be more succinct in the way that you say things to get your point across, which is kind of like what a la prima might demand in the painting. Um, so yeah, so I would say, you know, it's sure is it would be nice to have something like a la prima, yes, but more importantly, can you speak the language? Do you have the skills? The time, if you focus on the, the time aspect, because that's really what all the prima comes down to is the time, then you're really, you're focusing on the wrong thing. Learn how to do it and learn how to do it right. And then keep doing that, keep improving, and you'll, as you apply what your experiences is accumulating in different ways, then this will become much more natural. You supplement that with maybe some extra if you you know if you're really curious, you get some extra training, little tips and tricks um, about how to speed up your a la prima painting process. But you don't you I wouldn't for any beginners I would not recommend that you learn a la prima 
and then go back to learning things like values or edges or color. Learn values, edges, color, learn these fundamentals, these, this alphabet to that language, and then start playing around with different subjects and things. Yeah, wet and wet in one sitting, yeah. Yeah, it really comes as like an emergent property of all the other skills you have. Um, yeah. So it's not something like you need to focus on by itself, at least like to start with. Exactly. By like a really long shot. <laughs> so. Okay, and then catching up, let's see. Um, referring to the poll about who's seen a sergeant in person, Eric said, I chose no, but maybe I have. I don't know all the art I've seen in museums before. That's fair. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, and then Phoebe shared, Sargent painted 1870s through the beginning of the 20th century. Worth was one of his favorite designers back then. Eric said, that's interesting. There are plenty of American artists that I'm just not familiar with by name. I haven't formally studied art history yet, I guess. That's okay. <laughs> and then, yeah, that's fine. I actually am I'm pretty bad with my art history, too. And then Robert shared, Sargent worked really hard to get the tones and colors exactly right. He worked on the palette um, more than on the actual canvas. Yeah, I mean, that's, I think that's like most artists, though. Like, most of the work happens on the palette. And then the application, because you're thinking about the application while you're mixing the colors, right? Um, so it's kind of a derivative. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I believe Sargent said that he would spend more time thinking than painting. Yeah. <laughs> so he was very precise. Very, very precise. And then I've got a question for you, May. Oh, boy. Do you do any paintings with sceneries and animals? Um... Not specifically, not yet, but I'd be like open to it. I don't know. It's not really like in the genre that I'm trying to go into, like portraiture or illustration. Um, I guess illustration has like a lot of scenery, but not necessarily animals. But be open to it. Um, <laughs> I'm probably painting a probably painting a pet portrait soon for undisclosed reasons. <laughs> Yeah, we've seems like there's been a theme lately with me and May of doing pet portraits. <laughs> um, so, but I think we're just going to do one, yeah. one of those. It is there is a small possibility that for whatever reason, if something comes up, then and I'm not able to, then then May will be doing the uh, a different pet portrait other than the one that I'm planning on doing. Mm -hmm. Uh, but the plan is for me to do it and to do the one of Carter. So yeah, it'll be a, a very, very simple pet portrait just yeah. on a, that three by three inch canvas. Yeah, May and I actually sat down and we've planned out more of our live stream content. We've been, so far we've been going pretty off the cuff, but now we've been, we've developed more of a plan and we're going to, we're gonna be working on like a, a bigger painting that we'll take breaks from so that every week there's something different and fresh, but then there's also gonna be one large painting that's being worked on maybe like once every three weeks or something like that. Our audience was telling us that they wanted both a combination of um, like long form, like paintings that took a while and were more um, higher quality, like the stuff that May is doing for her portfolio that she's building, um, and then also stuff like this. So we're, we're getting to do a little bit of both. More information from Phoebe. House of Worth was a favorite fashion house in France that catered also to wealthy English and American socialites. So um, I'm not sure if, if favorite with a rich is a title of a painting, but
But Phoebe said, like favorite with the rich. So a lot of the gowns in his portraits were likely worth gowns. And maybe we're looking at them now. I wouldn't know. I'm, like I said, I'm not a huge art history buff. So Phoebe, if you want to explain any more, you are more than welcome to. Oh, cool. Stephen Harbour said, I've been exploring other themes and styles in art, and I found you guys. Awesome. Hi. <laughs> Glad you made it. I've entered the uh, the rendering phase. <laughs> yeah, I've got you zoomed in on on that lady there. <laughs> yep, left to right, I guess. I think. I believe we we all guessed that she is the middle child, the one that we're looking at now. Mm-hmm. You cracked something. I cracked my back. Yes. <laughs> my mom hates it when I do that, but. Yeah, I'm probably gonna leave the background alone, like as long as I can, because the focus is the figures. And honestly, the background is kind of fine the way it is. Um, I probably might need to tighten around this, the sister on the right. But yeah, all the most of the work will be the figures today, I believe. Until, cool. Start uh, yeah. by me. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I don't know. Maybe I finish them early, and then I just go like crazy in the background. We'll see. <laughs> but yeah, we'll see. And I kind of like the background the way it is. It's very, I mean, it's obviously like very loose. So it might prove like a nice way to bring the figures forward because like the um, the differentiation and degree of rendering will um, obviously bring the figures forward, make them look more, more realistic. Um, so that might be like a nice way to add more depth as well. Are you saying your background is? Better than Sergeant? <laughs> I'm saying it'll function better <laughs> for a six hour painting as opposed to like an, I don't know, well like said. 40 hour painting. <laughs> well said. I'm just teasing, giving you a hard time. I'm just saying. Like. How dare you? <laughs> <laughs> no, it must be exactly perfect. <laughs> my needs and Sergeant's needs are different. Oh my God, that'd be crazy. I think if I like really, really planned, to get something really close. But we didn't. So we get to see my version in all its chaotic glory. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it did really start off quite chaotic, didn't it? Yeah, because I didn't know what I was doing. <laughs> but I figured it out. So now we're here. And it like makes sense, I think. <laughs> so. Oh, yeah, Eric said, uh, oh, did we figure out the age of the sisters? So not officially. I haven't bothered to look it up. Maybe that information is out there, and anyone is more than welcome to. But uh, my guess was that, and I think a bunch of people agreed, was that uh, the oldest one is on the top right, middle is on the left side, and then the youngest with her hands more open, her arms more open is the youngest. Yes, Tim. Tim said, I have a Thomas Kincaid book of his sceneries. Have you guys ever heard of him? Yes, I have. Yeah, beautiful, beautiful work. I believe they called him the painter of light, which to me is a <laughs> Huge high compliment. compliment. Oh, yeah. 
Um, and Ma and uh, Rembrandt was the master of light. It's pretty Two good. Two very solid painters. Different styles, but they certainly knew what they were doing when it came to their lighting. All right, Eric's going to find out the truth. Yes. Just be careful of your head there. Thank you. Like oh. an animal, I think. <laughs> yeah, that's not good. Uh, yeah, I think Kevin mentioned it, like, last time he was working here. He was like, yeah, there's definitely, like, a, a creature. <laughs> We're like, okay. <coughs> okay, I got it. <laughs> <laughs> Try to mute your mic there. Yeah. Mm. Wow. Yeah, it's large. Wow. So you, you all probably can't hear it. But there is a large animal. Yeah, there's a there's a critter up a there. A beast. <laughs> <laughs> Gosh, what could that be? That sounds like a raccoon. A raccoon, some, two stories up. Some big fat raccoon. I don't know. I don't know. 
It, it sounds like it sounds like one, but how would be up there? Is that your first time hearing it? Yeah. I heard it uh, like last night. I was here painting. But, uh, yeah, not they, this, not this loud. <laughs> maybe. So above us is a retro fitness gym. Could it be a dog? Any chance that someone would keep a dog up there? That'd be weird. That'd be odd. Isn't, I feel like that's illegal because like you can't live there, right? Like. Because it's a place of business, not a residence. So mm. you can't, like, keep residence-related stuff. And, like, they would have... You think they, like, just got a dog? I don't know. Yeah, I don't know. Kevin's, like, convinced it's just some, like, wild creature. Wow. Yeah. A massive rat. Oh, God. Do not say that, please. <laughs> <laughs> Huh. Very interesting. Mildly terrifying. We now have a new case to solve. <laughs> yeah, you, you can solve it. I'm going to sit this one out. <laughs> <laughs> um, you have the violet pigment on May's palette. Um, Is it a magenta? It's a, it? Yeah, it's a kind of a magenta. If you take the um, Old Holland Bright Violet and Ultramarine Red Pink and mix them together, you'd probably get something really, really close to that specific color there. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that color is just a shortcut because <laughs> I don't I'm too. I'd rather like not mix those two paints together when I can just squeeze it out of the tube. <laughs> but it's very much easily doable. <laughs> mm -hmm. You know, said, my mind just can't comprehend how colors are changed due to how they relate to each other. It's so mind-blowing. May started in the previous live with a light mintish color, and now it's beige. Mm. What the F? <laughs> how did this happen? How did this happen? Yeah, it's pretty cool when you can start, like, anticipating it and, like, doing it on purpose. Mm. That's, like, a cool level. I was telling, I, I like met someone this week at college because um, I wanted to paint her <laughs> like for a portrait for my portfolio. I was like, you know, we should like hang out because it's kind of weird to like take a stranger <laughs> that you th think is like that, you know, like you want to paint them and that's like the only reason why they know you. So um, I was like, yeah, we should like get, get lunch and we were like talking and she was like really interested in like my whole art thing going on. Um, and so I was kind of like telling her about like my education and like how I see the world, <laughs> like visually speaking, not like, you know, complicated, but like visually mm -hmm. speaking. Um, and I was kind of explaining, I like grabbed like a salt shaker and I was like, see, like I don't see a salt shaker. I see like the light interacting with the surface and the planes of the salt shaker, like it's material to generate a color and then how the light grades into form because of its like curvature and how the light hits each individual point at a different plane, and, you know, like that sort of, very like technical sort of thing. But it's like very intuitive to me at this point. But um, she was just kind of listening to me and she was like, it must be so cool to be you and like walk around and look at things, <laughs> which I thought was really sweet. But um, yeah, yeah it's, it's funny. It's, it's a fun party trick. <laughs> yeah, it's funny because like for me, it's like second nature. But like when I'm explaining it to someone, I kind of get like a vibe check. I'm like, whoa, this is like, this is different. <laughs> you know, this yeah. is like not the standard. So it's like, it's like nice. Um, so yeah, she'll be a great model. I like saw her at like a club meeting I went to, um, like for philosophy, and, like at my school. And I was like, I need to paint this girl, holy crap. <laughs> <laughs> I love it when that happens. Um, Kevin tells me like, like now I'm like actively on the look for like portrait models and stuff. Like never like settle for someone who doesn't make you feel that way. Um, like when you look at them as like a subject of one of your paintings, because like the model determines the painting in like a really big way. So, mm. 
I mean, obviously, like, if you interact with them and you kind of, like, or you, like, watch them interact with other people and they seem, like, really, like, terrible, like, but they're, like, really, they'd be a great subject. And it's, like, you know, there's kind of, like, a call you have to make there. But otherwise, like, I'm very comfortable going up to, like, strangers and just being, like, hey, so I'm an artist and <laughs> I specialize in portraiture and I'm building my portfolio and I was, <laughs> I just saw you and I would be really, really excited if you would let me pay you for my portfolio and usually the answer is yes because it's like a pretty cool thing to do so yeah yeah that's what i'm doing at college <laughs> approaching strangers <laughs> and asking if i can paint them um along with schoolwork obviously <laughs> <laughs> um yeah it's a fun time cool that was a tangent <laughs> yeah tim uh said is there anybody on live chat right now that is in the Evolve program that could share some of their work? And um, I haven't seen any responses come in. So Tim, if you look on our Instagram, you'll see a lot of um, paintings that we post from our student work. Also, if you go on, if you just look up Evolve Artists Google Reviews, then a bunch of people posted their work when they were making reviews of the program. Um, let's see. You can also go to, there's a link, I believe it's in the description of this live. Let me double check that. That also, it shows some of our students and we actually interviewed them and just asked them their thoughts on the program. And um, so let me see if I can pull up that link for you. Um, another one is if if you want to, um, if you go to, on Instagram and search hashtag Evolve Artist, then you will see not only work that we've posted uh, from like Evolve's company, but you'll also see work that our students who have Instagram accounts are posting. And that'll give you the, probably the most, you know, unbiased viewpoint of uh, student results that you could get. So if you look up hashtag Evolve Artists on Instagram. Then I'll find that link if it's here. It's not in this, this one, so I'm going to find it somewhere else. Also, a fun fact is we have 9,000 subscribers now. Mm -hmm. So thank you, everybody. That's much appreciated. And if you haven't subscribed yet, would love it if you do. Just hit the old subscribe button. Give us a like on the live stream. I've gotten pretty bad about not asking people to do that, May. <laughs> I always like them. Oh yeah, um, watercolor newbie shared YouTube video review videos of the program are helpful too. Yeah, definitely. Oh yeah. So um, one in particular, Mithrilda. Um, you can look up her channel. She just like she just started making videos about her experience <laughs> in Evolve. She didn't ask us anything about it. She just started doing it and kind of you know trying to give a just a very unbiased viewpoint of the program. And um, you can kind of listen to her wrestle with some things even and just think, hmm, I don't, I don't know about Evolve doing it like this and this kind of makes me feel this way. Um, but you get to watch her whole progression from the entire uh, Foundations video and uh, pretty interesting and really cool to see how she comes around. Yeah, Dark Star Creations, another great one. Mia, Mia Sketchbook is another one. Lisa Harbinson started posting as well. Mm -hmm. um, is there anyone else? If you look on our channel, I have posted um, Evolve Artists on YouTube. And so that's another, another way you can find those people.
Okay, the link I just shared with you, Tim, is if you click on that, it's like a, a an Evolve page, and we kind of put together some things about what people have said about Evolve from our students. Um, just remember that if you click on that, it's going to take you off the live stream, so Control-click or open, try to right-click it, open a new tab, something like that. Awesome. Tim said, I can't wait to join the program. Had nice. a setback a couple weeks ago with COVID and just got back to work. That's sweet. Nice. Yeah, we'd love to have you. How's the painting coming, May? It's coming well. It's like nice to render. Taking my time. Mm -hmm. Making my way downtown. <laughs> <laughs> Walking fast? Walking fast, faces past, something, something, and I'm homebound. <laughs> yes. Good boy. Good boy. Good boy. Good boy. Into the sky. <laughs> I would walk a thousand miles if I could just see you smile. That's a line, right? Uh, if I could just see you. If I could just miles hold rhymes you with smile, so I'm just as good. <laughs> and I need you. Da, 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 da. <laughs> did you get that on camera? I did. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I'm getting exposed. <laughs> it's okay. Yes. Uh, I might butcher this name. Gilherm Fernandez said May wants to sing. Yes, yeah, she does. Oh God. Get this lady a mic. <laughs> Oh wait, do you have one? I do. That's crazy. <laughs> Be careful what you wish for. Dun, 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 dun. <laughs> <laughs> How does that little Nas song go again? <laughs> <laughs> it's a little explicit. Ah, uh, okay, okay. Probably won't. <laughs> I will not recreate it here. Thank you, much appreciated. I will not deliver my own rendition of a little Nas X song on on live camera. That's gonna be stuck in our heads now. I All know. Evening. We've got another uh, two hours to go. Very good. You have done this to us. I have. This is my contribution. I'm gonna make a poll. <laughs> Should May stop? stop. <laughs> no, we just got that song uh, stuck in their head. That'd be really funny. Who knows? Maybe they have no idea what we're even talking about. That'd be crazy. Maybe we're maybe we're not good at singing at all. <laughs> I would be heartbroken. Then he said, "Let her sing." <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna turn into a villain. Everyone's gonna be like, That's "No, so Daniel, you must let her." Any song requests? <laughs> the live stream just took a new turn, guys. Spin the wheel song request. Oh my god. <laughs> that would be so funny. We should do that as like a holiday special or something. Oh my god, imagine we did that on Christmas because Sunday is a Christmas is a Sunday. Right? Uh, <laughs> no yeah. one would watch. Everyone's actually celebrating in proper manners. <laughs> so let's like not do that. Yeah. We don't, yeah. That would be really funny though. Oh, <laughs> there's Sarah Price coming in clutch. She said, that's a thousand miles by Vanessa Carlton, I think. So true. Probably. I don't even know you the did name. It. We succeeded it. it. I did. I think what last time we started talking about Justin Bieber. <laughs> yeah. I, was, I wasn't going to mention that. I thought about it and I didn't want to talk about Justin Bieber. So I didn't. <laughs> <laughs> and I need you. <laughs> da -da 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 -da. I can't even see my transfer. I'm just saying things. If you had to guess the percentages of this poll. What was the poll? Oh, like the stuck poll in their is heads. Who just got that song stuck in their head? 87. You got me, and then you have what now? 87%. For which one? Oh, like having it stuck in their head? Mm. Less than Sorry that? Sorry to disappoint. Sadness. It's actually kind of the other way around. Oh, really? No one cares. Good. <laughs> <laughs> Be liberated. Oh, it looks like catchiness. Eric is back. Eric, did you figure out the, the answer? How old, which, which of the siblings are the oldest, youngest, middle? What is 
is going on in there? Sorry, that was unrelated. <laughs> <laughs> just yelling at everybody. <laughs> I like that Eric just went on like an actual like side quest on the internet. <laughs> That's funny. Like when we first started learning how to use the internet in like middle school and stuff, we used to have to do like these web quests where we just had to like Google information so we'd know the process of like searching for things. <laughs> you just brought it back. Congratulations. Eric said, not yet. I will have it for you. All right. Sounds like a promise to me. <laughs> <laughs> this whole live stream is just me saying off the cuff things. <laughs> <laughs> off the cuff. Off the cuff. Off the Piccadill. <laughs> <laughs> That's a pretty big cuff. Those are big, big historical shoes to fill. Neck cuffs. Tim said, I can tell you right now, her brush is singing some beautiful artwork. Aww. That's nice. Thank you. Gotta love that. <laughs> that That's what sweet. we're here for. <laughs> that validation. <laughs> it keeps us going. <laughs> I just got that. It's too human. Oh my god. <laughs> <laughs> no! <laughs> I just got that too. Oh my god. This is great. I'm getting better at this. This All little switching. I've got these, this little switcher over to my left side, and so my, my yeah. fingers are always ready to switch from one angle to another. Yeah, based on May's idiosyncrasy of choice mm -hmm. in that given exact moment. <laughs> Gilherm said, I just remembered Terry Crews sang that song in a really funny movie. Mm. And I'm seeing this song in a very funny live stream. We are the same. <laughs> I'm just saying things. Kind of fun. I'm sorry. We'll move on. <laughs> <laughs> How have you been, May? Enough. <laughs> the content. What's the uh, what's the state of your mental health since? <laughs> <laughs> it, it's fine. <laughs> Allegedly, no. <laughs> um. I don't know. Some people might think it's deteriorating, <laughs> based on what we're discussing in these live oh. streams. It's fine. Do you actually want me to elaborate, or is it like rhetorical? No, 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 no. you okay. know. We're not, I'm not interested in making things too personal, you know? Yeah. <laughs> Appreciate it. <laughs> Thank you for not forcing me to tell people how I really feel. <laughs> <laughs> Drive back to school in this freaking thunderstorm. Mm. Not looking forward to that. Wait, did you ever say what color you feel like? I did not. You did not? I think you asked me like before we started recording. And I was like... Oh, that's right. I was like, no comment or something. Uh, I think yeah. I answered. No, uh, you did. It was, the, it was a creamy yellow Yeah, color. I think that was just because like that was what I was mixing. Uh, mm. How am I feeling? What a loaded question. There's a thunderstorm going on. There's a giant rat upstairs. <laughs> ah, uh, a thousand miles in your head. Lil Nas. Lil Nas. Lil Nas and That's Thousand Miles colors. are having a party up here. It's crazy. <laughs> um, I don't know. I'm feeling pretty good. I'm feeling like the slightest value I have because it's like all these nice little accents I'm doing right now. The lightest one you have? Mm -hmm. Can you point to that? Thank you. It's, all, it's like bluish. It's very gray, all on the palette at least. Yeah, but it's like almost bluish here, which like I'm enjoying. Can so. you point to it on the painting? Uh, it's like here. Just because okay. everything else is very like golden, so. Right. It doesn't look like blue, it just looks like yeah. more metallic, maybe? Maybe that's the right word. Mm. Yeah. I'm hearing the rat again. Me too. I think it's got to be a rat, and then it just sounds louder than, it sounds bigger than it is. Yeah. That's my guess. Maybe it's just like a massive rat. <laughs> Hopefully we never find out. <laughs> I will walk. Oh, that rat. Yeah, it sounds like a rat, because you can almost hear the tail scurrying behind it. Mm hmm. I will not be listening for that. <laughs> <laughs> but it does make you wonder, like, what's the story? 
So story. let me give you, you all some context here. So we're in this pretty large building. Mm-hmm. Um, the, the ceilings here in, in our space are, was it 13 feet? Yeah. Okay. So fairly, we're, we're in a space certain. that has a 13-foot uh, yeah, ceiling. And then above, uh, like right above us is another story, retro fitness. So people work out there. Sometimes you'll hear thundering noises, and it's because people are doing deadlifts. <laughs> and supposedly this rat has somehow ascended Um, a whole story inside of a building. And if it... The only way up is, I think there might be an elevator on one side, a couple stairwells. There are stairs, yeah. So it either just went straight through an open door at some point, but that would have had to have been during the day. I mean, it's been out there for like days. So I feel like it's not in the building. I mean, definitely people have been working out and so they would have like perceived it, like done something about it. Maybe it went through some ventilation system. Oh, well, that makes sense. It could be in the pipes. The pipes are there. I don't know, I'm assuming. Carrie said, noises in our roof over here at the moment usually means you have a snake. They love roof spaces. I don't think we have snakes. It's definitely not a snake. It's too, but, uh, it's too like, thumpy. That's Australia for you. Snakes on roofs. Uh, My goodness. That makes sense. Rats can go inside walls, says Watercolor Newbies. Thank you. Yeah, that sounds, sounds like it got inside the wall, ventilation or something. And... Uh, Hopefully it finds its way out. My goodness. <laughs> yeah, Kristen said rats can fit through tiny openings, unfortunately. And then RJD, glad to have you here, says, I see the right side of a large cat's head, eye, ear, and nose in the sofa next to the girl on the left. Uh, well, it would be in the painting. Oh, uh, that's not intentional. <laughs> <laughs> if I'm you watched the stream it. last time, you know it was not intentional. <laughs> I was just putting things down. It's a it's a large cat's head. Okay. Let me know when, when everyone else finds it. We're looking for a large cat's head. I'm not. <laughs> Carrie said yes. Now that I see that cat, I can't unsee it. Hmm. Interesting. Eye, ear, and nose. Are you seeing it, Daniel? I'm not. I I see, I see, I'm seeing like some kind of creature, but it doesn't look like a cat to me. So I, I think maybe I put a nose where the eye would go. Harry said goblin. Mm. Why is there a goblin in the couch, guys? <laughs> That's tough. Yeah, I, I, I see something that looks more like a goblin. Squint down, you'll see the kitty. Mm. I'm seeing like an angry eye. I don't see where the nose would be. Oh, I do see it now. Oh, really? It would be, if it is, if it is what I'm seeing, then we're seeing like one eye, there's a, an ear just above the eye. Yeah, it might be a squirrel. It's kind of like turning his head in. 
This definitely does not look like a happy cat. It looks like a like a, it could be like a green black panther head. <laughs> I'll look for it later. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it, it's probably the way that the light is refracting off of the oh, makes sense. bits of paint. Robert said, seeing weird shapes and characters is actually a trick that can help get the shapes more accurate sometimes. Yeah, I guess that's another way of like defamiliarization. So you're not like looking for very standard shapes. Instead, you're just abstracting them instead. Yeah. Same Interestingly as... enough, now that I'm looking at the pillow in the reference in the uh, Sergeant painting, mm -hmm. I don't see as much as a cat, as much as I see like a walrus. Please uh, confirm, my beloved audience. <laughs> Let me know if you also see a walrus, or like a, uh, no, no, not a walrus. An elephant seal. An elephant seal, yeah. Yes. All right, I got, I got my validation from Carrie. Thank you, Carrie. <laughs> Tim Johnson said, okay, May, it's time for you to sing some Little John. No. <laughs> I, uh, I don't know any Little John songs. So. Isn't Little John the guy who's like, okay, like Pro that? Probably. Like kind of yelling stuff out. That is looking spiffy. I'm spiffy. That. Spiffy. Are you moving on to another female? Um, character? not, not yet. Either? I still haven't touched her hair or her face really, but okay. most of her clothes are done. But I, I would just stay here. I'll let you know when I'm like traversing the panel. <laughs> So you're gonna work on the head? Something. Uh, yeah. I don't even know the words to that song. It's still like in my head. Words to what song? If I could something into the sky. If I could fall. Well, yeah, into the sky. sky. Yes, very good. Do you think time, time would pass us by? <laughs> Cause you know I'd walk a thousand miles. If I could just see you smile. I don't think it's see you smile. I think it's if I could just see you. If I could just hold you. Oh really? Tonight. Da -da 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 -da. Tonight. <laughs> <laughs> and I need you. <laughs> Traumatizing the audience 101. Masterclass with amazing. <laughs> Zero retention rate. How to Yeah, I was just thinking we could oh. Hmm. What? Looks like we went dark on our palette. This is what I'm here for. You, oh. You're good. You keep going. We just we're down a we're down a feed. Okay. Oh, I see why. Is it not plugged in? It was not plugged in, mm. which was that was my mistake. Oh, gee, I also oh, gee. just realized I walked right in front of one of our cameras. <laughs> hey, they want to see you right anyway. Now. If I look a little sweaty, it's because I was. It's because I am sweaty. Earlier. Yeah. I love when people say I look tired. I'm like, yeah, it's because I am. And they like never know what to say. It's like just un brutally unprepared for honesty. It's like pretty funny. Okay, looks like it's back on. Yay. That's always nice. All right, I'm ending the poll. 
about the uh, the song. We got 66%, so it went down a little bit. So now 33% of our audience has that song stuck in their head, thanks to us. Look at us. We've Let's made go. such an impact on this world. <laughs> this is what I mean when I say I'm an influencer. <laughs> Watch your head. Thank you. Screaming, crying, throwing up. Sorry, that's like a, it's like a joke phrase. <laughs> I just said it out loud and realized how serious it sounds. Oh, interesting plot twist. Angela Gale said, "I can see another sister on the right. She is bent over, so you can't see her face." What? Is this in the... Oops. That is, like, not true. Hmm. <laughs> there are three. Is it in May's painting, or is it in... If it's in mine, it's not intentional, I promise. <laughs> well, if it, if, but if it is, where would it be? She said on the right, I, like, don't see it. It's just flowers and plants over there. If you just jumped in, Angela, um, the camera zoomed in a little bit on the, the master copy here. By the way, May, it is 9.30. Okay. I should probably move on then. <laughs> um. Thanks. We also, we're going to go, we're ending at uh, 11 officially. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Oh! What? Eric Hunt coming in with the info. So he said, my, my, it seems that you had it all correct. From left to right, Madeline Ad 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 Adine, 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 Madeline. Adayin, yes. Uh, Pamela Tennant and Lady Elko. So yeah, two, three, one was the correct order. Yes, that's so cool. I mean, that really, I mean, I, I feel elated, but really actually comes down to Sergeant, right? Mm -hmm. To think in those terms, um, and that's just you know portrait mastery, like knowing how to convey people to give off certain impressions. Not just because we often talk about the technical side of things, like how to represent something, how to you know create the impression that way, create the impression of a hand or of a dress mm -hmm. of, an, of a face. But here it's he's thinking of how do I create the impression of each one of these personalities, these characters in this painting and bringing them out. Pretty cool. Yeah, the fact that it was like so clear too, it's pretty cool. <laughs> it's not like even super ambiguous. What's that? Like the fact that it wasn't like ambiguous at all when you're trying to figure out which was which. Are you moving on to the next figure? Um, Whoops. soon, soon, soon. I wanna, cause like this stuff is really nice, so I wanna resolve this, like, almost up to par. So it's like, you know, it looks like it was rendered the same way. Alex Tan said, good evening, May and Daniel. Hi, Alex. <laughs> Thanks for making it. I know you have a lot going on. Yeah, good to see you. <laughs> Alex, how are you feeling? What color? If you had to <laughs> describe how you're feeling using a color. Whoops. May, you stepped right in front of the camera, right as I put it in focus. You just got your hair in high definition. Yeah, let's go. It's not gray, I promise. <laughs> Do you remember that live stream? 
where someone asked like oh, the yeah. hair was gray or something. That was pretty funny. I think that was like one of the first ones. We like went slightly over time and then everyone was just like, what color is her hair? I was like, what's happening? <laughs> oh, thankfully we were, we were looking at the other camera, so it was okay. So you just got my hair in high definition. <laughs> yes, I did. Alex said, right now is like a navy blue. Gray like the month. Gray like the month. Well, actually, hold on, Alex. Let's get a little more specific here, all right? So I've got this <laughs> fancy link, right? Alex is like, I did not sign you... up for this. <laughs> <laughs> he's going to give you um, a whole bunch of colors that you can you can pick from to get very specific about how you're feeling. This level of introspection is above my pay grade. You're not, you're not required to explain why, but if you just share what color you're feeling, that'd be, that'd be marvelous. I'd love to know how you're doing. Alex just leaves. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Tim said, okay, I'm going to my art studio now to paint me something. Nice. Cool. Yeah, let us know how it's going as you're working on it. Mm -hmm. We'll be here until, or for another hour and a half. Reed said, hi guys, just curious, what's May's history with Evolve? May, what is your story? Who are you and how did you Who get here? I? It all started in 2003. Um, I was born. <laughs> Sorry, I was really stupid. Wait, um, were you really? What, born in 2003? Yeah. Yeah, I'm 19. Whoa. Yeah, I was born after 9-11, ooh. That's like a thing most people say to me when they're older. Well, even just after the year 2000. After 2000, yeah. I'm 19 years old. <laughs> um, I started off, I always, I always liked to paint and I always liked to draw. And <laughs> um, I'm always... <laughs> <laughs> What's that? <laughs> no, it's like such like a typical line when like artists are asked to be like, how did you get into art? And so I was like, oh, I always loved to do it from a very young age. So yeah. That line. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. Um, and so when I was younger, my mom put me into like a bunch of like art classes, but they were like pretty bad because the teacher would just like, you would just sit around in a table with a bunch of other kids and there would just be like a bunch of magazines in the middle with like pictures of people or like trees or whatever in them. And then you just have to like copy something for like an hour in some random person's like basement and then they would like kind of come around and like kind of tell you to get up and then they take your seat and then they'd work on what you were doing not explain like anything get up after like five minutes and then just like you would sit back down and like keep working so it's like very much just like what am i doing um but I, I wanted to like get good and like actually like know what i was doing and like get good at art in general as like part of who i wanted to be when i was younger um sorry i just saw this at the do it before I forgot. Um, and so I kind of like asked my mom, I was like, hey, could you, is there like a way we could get, go to like a different place, <laughs> something that's like a little more different, more serious? Um, and she was very, we we're very fortunate that we lived very close to um, Kevin Murphy's school at the time. Kevin's the founder of Evolve. Um, and he has a brick and mortar school here in central Jersey. And he at, um, at the time was actually only like eight minutes away from us, like by car. And so, I went in for like a trial class when I was like 12 um, and I immediately like thought this was like, I was like, okay, like this is like where, where I'm like going to get good. Um, a very unique thing about like his school is that he doesn't hang like any of his own artwork up. Like everything up on the walls um, is like by teenagers, like up to age like 19. And like, I was just looking at the work and I was just like absolutely like blown away. And like, you know, that's like the point, <laughs> but like <laughs> it like works. Um, and everything is like really nicely framed too and set up really well. So it feels like a museum of like the potential that you could achieve at a very young age. Um, and so I was like, okay, I really want to do this. And so um, I was studying from like 12, from age 12. Um, and the curriculum has changed like a lot since then. Um, Evolve was founded about five years ago. So I got there about two years before Evolve started. Um, the curriculum has changed like crazy. Um, so I didn't like learn anything like with Evolve or the Evolve curriculum. Um, but fast forward to when I was 16, so about three years ago. Um, I was, I kind of had like a little bit of like an art ego about myself because I was like the kid in my grade who everyone like defaulted to for like being a good artist and whatnot. Like I was the kid everyone wanted like for the group projects, to, like draw stuff. <laughs> and, um, uh, and I've been like at the school pretty long, I, uh, the art school, and I've been, I did like the foundational summer program. So I learned how to like direct paint and do like 
very direct like realism in that way. So I was like, hey, like, you know, like I have some skills. I'm pretty cool. And so I went to this thing called like the called um sorry, just making sure that wasn't a mistake. <laughs> um uh, the National uh, Portfolio Day and basically a bunch of like art schools from around the America um like get together and they have their little like admissions officers and you kind of bring your portfolio and like show it to people and um you know you kind of get feedback like while you still have two years left in high school to um like improve your portfolio and whatnot um and so I went in there like thinking I was like gonna be like pretty ahead of everyone else and then I was like not I was like looking at everyone I was like holy crap <laughs> like these like other 16 year olds are like insane and like um like, what am I doing, you know? And so I kind of had like a little bit of a, I don't want to call it like an existential crisis, but it was like a very big thing for me because I'd been identifying myself with art for like a really long time. And also at that time, um, I, was in, I was a sophomore in high school and the town I come from, um, it's like very academically rigorous. And so like at that point, people around me in my grade, like my friends were already talking about like what they wanted to major in in college and what they wanted to do as a career and stuff. So I was like thinking about that. And I was kind of thinking about like art um, because it was something I really liked to do, and obviously there was like potential in it because I was like kind of looking up to Kevin, and I was like, wow, he had like four different careers, like all in art, and he's obviously doing very well. So, um, and he likes his life, <laughs> which is like very different from like a lot of adults um, that I knew who kind of worked in offices and didn't really like what they did for eight hours a day. Um, and so I was like thinking about that, and then um, I went to the I think I was thinking about going to, going into art as like a profession, and then I went to National Portfolio Day and got like destroyed. <laughs> and then um, so I kind of like sat on it for like a really long time. Um, and then I went to Kevin and asked if there was a way that I could like be a professional based on like where I was now, like at my age. Like, is there enough time between like now and when I have to like live on my own and be independent? So in like six years, like 22 after graduating uh, college, um, that I could have like a future in art. Um, and he like thought about it and then he decided to kind of, he decided to let me be his like final apprentice and I've been studying with him very closely. Um, I've been with him like since, <laughs> like throughout like the entire like conception of Evolve and like watched it grow and I've actually like been kind of like in the room when he was recording like the first iterations of the videos and stuff, which is pretty cool. <laughs> um, but I never like directly participated in Evolve stuff until I guess like this summer, I started doing these live streams um, kind of as like a way to create content and also to help myself get a little bit more internet exposure. Um, and I've been helping with like doing webinars and like kind of techie behind the scenes stuff as well. And I'll be able to help with the live streams with other people want to paint like Daniel and Kevin. So yeah, I guess that's like a very long winded <laughs> kind of explanation of how we got here. Did I miss anything? Or Yeah, I guess I was just around for a lot of the beginning of Evolve and around a lot during the, um, like when Kevin was doing his live streams like earlier in the year, I was always like three feet away also painting. Um, so I kind of like knew how these worked and stuff. And so over the summer, since he was really busy with like his own summer programs, um, I kind of stepped in and took that role. And yeah, <laughs> that's where I am. Yes, uh, sorry, I didn't realize my mic was off. <laughs> yeah, um, Eric, actually, you just put it in a very nice way. Um, though I know you're saying it in, in jest. Um, Eric said, this summer, coming to a theater near you, the prototype <laughs> of evolution, one artist, one portfolio, find out the origin story of a caterpillar story, May learns May. to fly. <laughs> so, but yeah, actually, that's, I mean, that's kind of really what it comes down to, her story, right? If you think about it, it's like, you know, Kevin has, his, he's got, all of these accolades, he's done all these incredible things, and he's kind of like, for lack of a better word, like an art god, right? It's like oh, yeah. what he does and what he's done just can feel as, as much as he has all this wisdom and authority to be able to speak on subjects and watch your head may as you're painting yeah. that. Yeah. Um, it's hard to, he's got an incredible story too. If you, you should check it out on our YouTube channel. His story is cooler but, than mine. Um, <laughs> Where he is at now, at this present moment, can be a little hard to relate to. It's like, oh no, I can never be like Kevin, you know? <laughs> um, and then you've got someone like May, who is, and I say May because, you know, obviously I'm, I'm, I'm here as well, but 
I'm not pursuing a career in painting like May is. Like, I'm, I'm actually beyond content working with Evolve and focusing on that. There's a few commissions that come in that are just right in my lane that I feel is imperative for me to do, but I'm not pursuing a career like May is. And so May is, she's, she's the person who is on that journey. Mm-hmm. So there's something very powerful about that. And um, some, you know, like we all can relate to May. And because um, we're all kind of on this journey together in learning, improving our skills and um, and especially for May in developing a career. And so we get to just watch this unfold and having her on now, um, it's gonna be really cool to kind of look back um, in time and kind of have enjoy these moments where, <laughs> who knows, we're gonna, look, we're gonna be cringing so much. I can't believe we were singing, you know, during our live streams, but. I'm already cringing. No. <laughs> but you know, it's, and so, but yeah, it's like, you wanna see it happen, this is it. It's happening. Word. Right in front of you. Like May was just at this uh, this place in Princeton where her work <laughs> was being showcased. Yeah. And so um, actually it was, I had been thinking about kind of doing like a quick live stream uh, going down there and everything, but. Oh, that'd be great. Yeah. That wasn't cool, yeah. <laughs> that'd be really fun. Well, is it, if it's still up, maybe. Yeah, no, no, it's gonna be up until like December, December 13th. Oh, really? Mm-hmm, it's like a whole cool. season. Huh. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Maybe one of these streams we just Hang do out. that instead. Oh yeah, they would love that. If um, they there. Well, it might be a little bit noisy because there's like a fair amount of traffic. But yeah, you're, yeah, Alex said we are seeing greatness in progress. Yeah, that's Aww. exactly that. <laughs> that's so sweet. You know, because it's like we can hear all these stories about people who made it and they're sharing their wisdom, but there's a there can be like a little bit of a disconnect. Um, and so, but this is it, it's happening in real time, you know. Mm-hmm. There's, there's new, this is like a new playing field. Technology has introduced things that, you know, which just wasn't around um, for the people who are already established today. Oh yeah. So, does May have a website of her art? I do. Yes, she does. <laughs> it's not super up to date with everything I've made because photographing artwork is like a little bit of a hassle for me because I don't paint like at the school. Um, so I have to like bring these like huge paintings in. So um, it's a little, it's a little not not up to date. But most of most of what I deem worthy is up there. Yeah. It's just your name, dot com, right? Yes. Yeah. Okay. If you uh, click on that, just um, right click it and open it in a new tab, so you don't leave the live stream. And then um, May had also mentioned that the cur- curriculum was very different, and it was, but also I want to clarify that everything that she's, like all the skills that she has now, not only have they, c- they come from the same person, but she's still learned values, edges, yeah. color. She's learned how to break down and understand what she's seeing and turn it into a process. And it's just that the way that all of those things. It's like the knowledge is the same. Mm-hmm. The curriculum has just changed in how that knowledge is presented. Yeah. And it's yeah. been more streamlined um, so that it, it goes more quickly. And uh, I got to say, like, yeah, it is it is much more quickly. We Did did you start in charcoal, May? I started in charcoal. Yeah, yeah. May and I both started in charcoal, which took us There like, were no, like, line year. drawings or anything either. It's just, like, you just straight up raw paper, raw pencil. <laughs> Right. Oh really? Okay, I had yeah. I had the you had the lines. Yeah, the lines. I didn't have the lines. <laughs> so yeah, it was like another generation before May. Yeah, so you know, just changes in application of how the knowledge is presented, but it's only gotten better. Right. Um, yeah, that's a, just one of the things that makes evolve different is we actually don't teach drawing first before painting, which is pretty controversial. <laughs> um, and we have a video on that. Yeah. If anyone is curious, just let me know and I can give you the link. 
Yeah. But information's the same. So same content, different format. How's that? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that's a good way of putting it. Which is just uh, also just yeah to keep talking on that. May's been around for, for how? Seven one? seven years. Seven years, and then you got serious. When did you start getting serious? About I became their uh, Kevin's apprentice about three years ago. But okay. I think I got like really serious about that. Was like oh I just want to get good at painting. Yeah, and um, you put in and have like being a professional painter as an option. But I really got serious at the beginning of this year. I would say. Okay. Like January. Yeah, for your career. Yes. Mm -hmm. I was like, this is the plan A. Would you say you put in thousands of hours at this point? Oh, yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. <laughs> yeah so, so, you know, that's also a part of it is like, there's a, there's a time, there's a time factor in here as well. Oh, for sure. Where I've been around uh, at this school with Kevin since I was 15. And so it's, I'm looking at coming up on 12 years. Um, and so May and I and um, like this, this brick and mortar school has been around longer than Evolve. Mm -hmm. So a lot of our Evolve students, they're doing incredible work already, but, um, and they're getting there much faster than like it took me, like it took me like I think two and a half years to get to, get to a painting that, you know, actually looked like, you know, where people were like, whoa, like you did this, mm -hmm. you know? But most of our students are doing, the all students are doing that in a year's time. It took me two and a half years. So it's just gotten faster. Um, but at the same time, we've also developed a lot of experience. So mm -hmm. we have accumulated experience that is, um, is now, we're kind of just like showcasing like this is what you can do once you have these skills and then all the years of experience to go along with it. Yeah. And uh, one thing that I'm, I don't know if I, this might be biting off more than I can chew, but once I get comfortable doing live streams with everybody here, um, I'd love to start experimenting with the stuff that I like to experiment with on my own, which is painting from my imagination and, you know, kind of creating things on the spot, which would be, yeah, really, really high pressure <laughs> during a live stream. But um, would love to kind of share like that, that journey with you all and, um, how that's been going for me. I'm just making a very quick detour to the left face, but I'll be back in like two seconds, so you don't have to change the camera. Just watch your head. Yeah. Uh, Tim said, I was going to ask you, Daniel, were you going to do a live like May does of a painting? Yeah, so the goal is Lean your head back again. Thank you. Um, uh, yes, the goal is next week to for me to do a live like this. I've been been getting very uh, comfortable. I've been si I'm sitting in this nice leather chair that Kevin has at the school. <laughs> I get to see everyone's chats and comments, and uh, you know I love the relational parts of all this. And uh, but yes, it is time. It is time for me to get back up there paint some things, we'll see how it goes. You know, it's one thing to, you know, like, thank you, Sarah Price. Sarah Price just said, <clears throat> I'm modest, but my work is gorgeous, thank you. Um, you know, it's one thing to be good, but it's another thing to be good and be on camera and talk <laughs> at the same time, so it should be fun. I'm, I feel like uh, starting off simple is the way to go. There's a lot to juggle with, with all that and doing that simple uh, portrait of Carter will be a good way to start. Coming up on 9.50.
Reed said, I'm currently working through, um, where, how do they pronounce the bar, Bargs? Is that how you pronounce them? I always just see them in the written form. The what? The Barg, Barg, B-A-R-G-U-E-S. Barge? B-A-R-G? Yeah, it's the, um, I know the style, it's like this drawing style that's very technical, um, I just don't know how it's pronounced. I don't know what that is. I believe is. it's a Barg. I could be wrong. Um, but yeah, live figure cast, live portrait and charcoal. So it sounds very like Atelier-esque. Okay. Uh, mm -hmm. Reed said, my school takes the stance that if you can't draw it, you can't paint it. I kind of think everything informs everything. It's easy to get lost when taking in too many different ideas at once. I like the simplicity of the Evolve approach for that reason. Charles Park, yeah. Yeah. I mean, if you're into simplicity and easily digestible and applicable education, this is kind of what Evolve is for. Yeah. So, Reed, you're doing, you're kind of doing a both and. You're, you're studying Evolve and then also learning at another art school? Reed is in an atelier program in Austin, Texas. Okay. Cool. Well, I hope that's I hope that's been super helpful for you. We usually recommend for Evolve students to, if they're in Evolve, to just focus and go through Evolve without like muddying the water with two different opinions from different teachers. Um, I think there's like an old Chinese saying. Maybe it's made up, but it's like. Two tigers cannot rule one mountain. <laughs> um, and so, yeah, so we, we typically recommend that our students just, if you're doing Evolve, then just take Evolve and, like, treat it as its own separate thing. But, uh, you know, if that's what you're doing both and, then just work with what you can. Hopefully that works out for you. Hopefully you're able to to properly separate, you know, both of those things so that they're not, like, getting in the way of each other. So, for instance, like, when you're doing the Evolve painting assignments, you're still able to follow the exact process that we're giving you, not worrying about whatever other techniques you might be learning from the atelier. That's sweet. Reed said, I started with Evolve but had an opportunity to do the atelier full-time. Wow. Reed said, all streams to the same ocean. Hopefully. Hopefully. Hopefully they complement each other.
Reed said, beautiful work, May. Just ch checked out this, the website. Thank you. Thank you, Tim. Is the sci-fi one the same painting that Kevin did or similar? Yes, if you're if you're uh, okay. Yes, Kevin live streamed a sci fi painting. So there's, I think it was like 11 or 12 videos. I think mm -hmm. 11. I forget the exact number. Oh, on her. Oh, on her site. Um, no, I did not no, copy different painting. Kevin's painting. <laughs> Those are my original compositions. Um, the one he did is also like his own. So. Yeah. No overlap. Well, he is in this in some of the paintings. So. We said, I was going to say, it looks like him. Yeah, it's him. <laughs> I'm next, right, May? <laughs> Commission me. I don't know. Oh. <laughs> Could be. We can talk about it. <laughs> There's like a contact tab on my website if you're like serious. <laughs> it just emails me, basically. Mm. Or you could just email me. My email is in there, too. It's just my name and then R-O-C-K-S, rocks. And then at Gmail. Nice. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'm. Uh, I'm trying to to get May to use me as a model for Zeke <laughs> in Attack on Titan. Anyone It'll happen. That? In all in time. <laughs> if anyone you know looks like Levi Ackerman, please tell me. <laughs> we need like a Caucasian male who is like pale and has like short, not too short. But like black or really dark hair with like bangs that go like this, like curtain bangs. I can't find him. <laughs> it's necessary. <laughs> yeah, I was thinking about like when we do the Attack on Titan painting, um, using the scene where he's fighting the the Beast Titan, because like that's a very iconic. You're gonna one. make me look like a monkey. <laughs> no, <laughs> I think. You might be in it like in the background or something, because it might be more of like a poster montage than like just a scene. I'm just thinking about it. <laughs> the coolest possible image. <laughs> in all capital letters. You could also just do like uh, slice of life type stuff, right? So like this is me just shamelessly pitching another idea for Zeke. <laughs> it's like if you do like Zeke maybe leaning against the wall, like a pale wall, kind of like at the, uh, what is it, like the rift, the, the encampment area? Yeah. And he's like holding like a... A baseball. A, yeah, a baseball. Mm. 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 Contemplating, you know, kind of just like slice of life stuff, maybe. You... Maybe. I mean, me and Kevin are talking about doing like still lives of like Attack on Titan. That would be interesting. Mm. Maybe. I mean, my brain always goes to like the most dynamic possible thing. <laughs> so like, um, yeah, who knows? And it was like, use me as Zeke. Use me as Zeke. <laughs> <laughs> 
It'd be fun. Yeah. It'd be for a sure. fun one to model for. For sure. You'd have to get like round glasses. I know. I get to find out how if I can pull off a really hipster look or not. <laughs> It'll be fun. I so. probably have to do some sculpting on my beard too. <laughs> Make it a bit more pointy. Yeah, grow it out a little bit. Yeah. yeah well, and you have to like grow it like cur you have to like part your hair differently. Mm. It's be like in the middle, and then like these little curtains, and then the curtains have to flare out too. So it's like a elongated mustache. <laughs> That's how I think of it. I think it's. <laughs> You're gonna make me work for it. <laughs> <laughs> I saw this dude well, in New York City the other day. Yeah, yeah. I saw this dude in New York City the other day who looked like exactly like Zeke. He even like had the glasses and everything, and I was like so bewildered. I was like, no way. Oh, I should have asked him. It was cool. But he was in New York, you know, like the likelihood of him being able to like make it all the way down here is like pretty low. So mm. I have to like think about stuff like that too. Sadness. Why not? It's not too far. I guess. It's true. But now you're stuck with old me. <laughs> what a shame. <laughs> nah, it'll be fun. Start working out, you know, <laughs> get into the role. Start working on my baseball throws. Yes. It's like Zac Efron prepping for like Baywatch. You have to like not eat carbs for like, <laughs> I don't know, like 10 weeks or something crazy. Yeah, I like forgot about And then about we do like a, hmm? a big obstacle course. Competition, me and Ke versus Kevin. <laughs> That'd be really funny. Kevin being Dwayne the Rock Johnson. <laughs> <laughs> Kevin as the Beast Titan. Edie just jumped in. Nice to see you, Edie. Let us know how you're feeling using an Evolve, or sorry, an Old Holland oil paint color. Who's the, uh, who's the commander in Attack on Titan? Erwin. Erwin. There's a dude at the gym who looks kind of like him. Yeah? Yeah. I couldn't he's, pull he's him like, off? Hmm? I couldn't pull off an Erwin? <laughs> You'd have to like shave like uh, your entire face. Yeah, not happening. And I would not, yeah, I would not ask you to do that. Mm. Yeah, it'll be fun when we start like actually pulling people together. Who would any ideas for Mikasa and Aaron? I do there's this waitress I had at season fifty two who could be Mikasa. Mm. I actually asked her to model for a portrait, but she didn't like text me back, so I don't know. She still works at Cry Catcher on a Friday or Saturday. Watch your head as you're painting. Thank you. Aaron, I'm not sure about. I have not been thinking about Aaron. I feel like I'm not gonna paint Aaron in his human form. If I paint him, it's gonna be like as a Titan. So it'll have to be like fabricated. Just find like a sh shredded model. <laughs> Some shredded dude with long like brown hair, yeah. It is 10.06, under okay. an hour left. Hmm, okay. Have you worked on the face of the youngest yet? No, I'm about to. May. What? <laughs> I 
happen? And then we're going to work on the oldest sister. Uh-huh. Just putting, putting some fire on you. It's okay. Let's, let's see some, some progress. Ouch. <laughs> <laughs> This will be our last session of this painting. I know. It's okay. I'm not like super emotionally attached to it. So you're settling? <laughs> uh, yeah, I guess. Probably not. What? I think it'll be fine. Like. I think you're good, just moving along great. Just keep. Just go faster, you know? <laughs> yeah. Stop talking. Stop singing your silly little songs. Yeah. This will no, be fine. You need a to lot keep of the work talking. in here is done. It's you just need to like do here. everything you've been doing just faster, and you need to entertain all of us. And uh, yeah, and sing more, and don't sing. And whoa, what is that doing on the brush? Hello. Sorry. It happens sometimes. <clears throat> I'm a real taskmaster. Now, zoom in for our beloved audience. It's the second time I've used that phrase. Mm -hmm. I wonder why I say that. You're getting sentimental. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it is what it is. Yeah, you're right. You're right. <laughs> I mean, I've spent hours with these people every week, you know. <laughs> it's pretty I special. I don't know why, but it sounds creepy. <laughs> <laughs> I spend hours with you guys every week. We watch this one person. Eric smiled. See, now whenever I see Eric, I just remember, oh, he loves the color green. All different kinds of green. Nice. I believe he was feeling forest green last week, but now he's feeling cobalt green. Just amazing. <laughs> <laughs> the connections are endless. The cool little uh, bracelet thing on her right arm, our left. This thing? Hmm? This thing? No, 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 on her, the... Oh. <laughs> not you. <laughs> Sadness. Yeah, yeah. Though your rings are cool. Thank you. <laughs> I say, is your, is your ring green? Does it, it matches your shirt, doesn't it? Oh my god, it does. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> so much for noticing. <laughs> No, I must confess, May had to tell me this uh, before we started our last <laughs> That's why we're laughing about it. Just watch your head. Yeah. You really like doing the, the head cock to the left, don't you? It helps me see. <laughs> I'm trying to perceive my work. Mm. Well, too bad. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, well, that's your problem. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> I wonder how bad it's going to be for me. See, these are like these little things, you know? Mm -hmm. You're going to, yeah, you're going to know what it's like when you're trying to paint this intense detail. And I'm going to be like, move your head. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I'll be trying to get some thought out. You move your head. Yeah, move I'm like, your head. yeah, I'm like, watch yourself. <laughs> <laughs> Hopefully my beard doesn't. Take up prime real estate. Oh, that would be funny. I don't think so. It's always like, I'll be down here. I imagine. Maybe we could have like, 
some sort of electric zapper, like any time. <laughs> like a shock collar. <laughs> oh my god. Yeah. Wait, no. <laughs> There's like an electric fence here if I move huh. over. The <laughs> oh my god. That'd be horrible. Interesting. No, not interesting. I mean, I'm not saying I, it would. Yeah, it feels really wrong on this side, but like I think I might be willing if I was the one painting, if it was a problem to try it out. But it would feel very wrong to be the one hitting the button. That's like a whole. You cycle. know, self induced is one thing, but if somebody else. That's a whole psychological experiment. Yeah. It's like it'd be more traumatizing for the person hitting the button than the person. Because, you know, you can turn the. Turn the dial down so that it's just a little, very subtle reminder. I would not do that. <laughs> <laughs> well, you wouldn't, you wouldn't zap me? No. Hmm. Might have to find somebody else then. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure Kevin would love to. <laughs> oh, Kevin loves me. <laughs> Keep telling yourself that. I'm kidding, I'm kidding. <laughs> Yeah, it'd be kind of bad if you like knew someone who would be readily willing to zap you. Like, <laughs> that'd be an issue. <laughs> okay, take care, Karen. Bye. I swear I don't actually talk like that. <laughs> <laughs> Kristen said, are you combining Milgram experiments with sing-along painting now? <laughs> Crossover yes. of the century. No, we're not. <laughs> we are paving new roads to new places. Where no one will follow. DD, okay, here's a, here's a discussion we could have. Oh boy. Uh, question from DD. Mm -hmm. At one time, not too long ago, most art, especially sci-fi, was mm -hmm. done by men. Do you feel there is still discrimination in the art industry? Um, not really. I think, like, the internet and just changing political attitudes, obviously, have kind of eliminated that. I don't know, at least personally, I don't feel like there's anything. Um, it just might, there, there still might be some, like, legacy stuff going on. Um, we're just, like, men were there earlier, and so they built their connections first. But that's not, like, an active thing that's still happening, I think. I don't know. Mm. And ultimately, at the end of the day, we do our own best, and we control what we can control, and we choose to be upset about what we could have controlled and didn't do the best. So, for me, I don't really think about stuff that I can't control, <laughs> if it exists. I just do not have the mental bandwidth or time for it, really. Yeah, I don't know. That's my take. I'm not super up to date or anything, though, but it's just kind of how I feel. <laughs> yeah. I can't say I can weigh in substantively on the matter. He said, in NYC, as recently as 1985, there were still galleries who rarely, if ever, showed female artists' work. Leo Castelli comes to mind. Hmm. I don't know. <laughs> Didi, what's been your experience with all this? Have you personally, like, had your own journey to walk through where that's concerned?
He said, I went to Parsons and I felt female artists were not taken as serious by many, but not all professors. Hmm. Sorry to hear that. Edie said, things are probably different now, and the internet has democratized access to the market. Yeah. That much is certainly true. The, uh, you know, with the internet, your competition is everybody. Yeah. You can ship anywhere in the world, and, you know, you're competing for the same hashtags, and, and so it's not, uh, yeah, it's just, it's just a different, definitely a different situation. All right, moving to the other sister. Not, not yet, not really. Oh, okay. It was just like I had extra red, and I was like, I can put it somewhere. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> You're fine. Cried a little wolf there. Yeah, I think that happens a lot where it's like I look like I'm moving somewhere else, but it's like, no, it's just extra on my brush and it can also work here. So I just move there for a bit and I come back. Mm. What? Didi said, I also graduated with an architectural design certificate in vocational school. When I graduated and started working, I was repeatedly told by fellow draftspeople that I should be staying home. Oh yeah, architecture is really bad. Still. I think it's a lot worse than like illustration, at least at the moment. Didi said, today, approximately half of college architecture students are women, so things do change. Reed said, the atelier I'm a student at is owned and run by two women, both incredible artists, lots of powerhouse ladies out there. That's a bummer, Didi.
question from Edie. Mm -hmm. Have you guys ever used an airbrush, please? Nope. I have not. I believe Kevin has. Kevin has, yeah. He does not use them anymore. <laughs> yes, very, very good clarification. Back in his like illustration days, I think. Yeah, I think when he was still figuring things out. Him said, art is all about freedom and the joy I get. Totally lost for about 10 hours every time I do a painting. That's awesome. Let us know how your painting is coming along, Tim. I believe you said you were going into to paint uh, a little while back. And then Reed said, you may have already covered this, but can you briefly explain May's palette? Is it what the Evolve program teaches or specific to May? Um, I think there are some colors in there that are in the palette that Evolve gives, but there are also some other colors that May has added um, just as she's been building up experience. She's been picking colors that she can just, you know, take straight out of the tube and utilize. So it's kind of a mix. Yeah. It's a good way of putting it. <laughs> but um, the general idea in the Evolve palette is that you have a warm and a cool for each of the main colors. And that really helps you get a more full spectrum palette for your mixing options. Oh, Didi said, I'm dying without a fan brush. I'm trying to follow Evolve to the T. No fan brush. Yes. Thank you, Didi. Keep hanging on. No fan brush. He should never need a fan brush to complete a painting. I we think. do give fan brushes in for block four, but we only really use them to soften the very surface of the paint. So it doesn't affect what the painting looks like as mm -hmm. much as it's just the very surface of it so that there's no glare yeah. coming off of the painting. No, no application of paint via fan brush. Right. We don't use it to make gradients. None of that. <laughs> it's something that you can easily play around with, and maybe, Didi, you already have um, after you've gone through the Evolve program, and I'm sure you'll be able to easily integrate it back into what you're learning through Evolve afterwards. But you don't want it to be a crutch at this stage of your learning journey. So may I think we're approved to go for the electric collar because Kevin texted me earlier, he said, zap. Of course he would say that. <laughs> Sadness. <laughs> not what Maybe I he was saying that he'd be willing to zap me. Huh. That no, sounds more like it. <laughs> I don't wanna do that. Yeah, I think Kevin's texting you. Maybe he wants to do it. <laughs> <laughs> See, Kevin and I, we, we understand. 
a little bit of pain for both of us could result in not looking at the back of people's heads, you know? It could be huge for our live streams. <laughs> People wouldn't ask me if my hair was gray anymore, you know? It would really <laughs> add another dimension or take away a useless one. <laughs> the view duration would just soar. Oh, for sure. <laughs> Imagine if you could hear it. Just <laughs> oh, I, ah. <laughs> no! Then that's what we would like, we'd make all of our live streams around that idea. It's like, I get zapped every time, blah, blah, blah. Every time you do such and such a thing, you know? Yeah. Every time I move my hands. <laughs> that it's would like, be bad. Yeah, it's like killing, killing bad habits with an electric collar. <laughs> Jesus Christ. That's awful. Imagine that um, Kevin is, is watching and... Every time that you... I do something wrong. Yeah, like, or not just that, but no, it's like something specific. Like every time you blend without making a proper gradient, <laughs> you get zapped. I would be unconscious within half an hour. <laughs> bad. Very bad for me. Yeah, in Evolve we say no blending. And what we mean by that is don't take paint that's on the painting and just push it around to try to create a gradient. That's just going to make a big mess. It's going to be muddy more contaminated, it's going to thin down the painting. Instead, you want to be applying paint to make your gradient. And so, um, yeah, so we just use, I mean, that's the word we use, blending. And uh, it's a big no-no, especially when you're learning. Thankfully, in other techniques, you can use not, it's not really blending as much as it's more of like fading into one thing, where you kind of it's like you're just using less paint as you're transitioning. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, it's especially for from blocks through all through blocks one to four, really, it's a it's a big no no. I used to blend all the time, even when Kevin was telling me not to. <laughs> Looking back, and I can see it in my work when I look back. But not anymore. It's I've called, changed. It's <laughs> called character development. That's right. It, it kind of is character development because it's just patience, you know? Yeah. It's like, you know that if you take the extra time to have the right color, either whether it's mixed or, um, yeah, usually it would be mixed. So, you know, take your brush away from the painting, go get the right amount, and come back to it. Like, if you watch, um, when in Kevin's live streams, the amount of times he goes back for the palette, it's just like... You got whiplash. It's, yeah, it's like routine, just back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. He's always applying a good dose. It's 10.30. May I make a recommendation, May? Yeah, go for it. Um, so we could probably spend like another half an hour working on this pillow in the foreground, bringing out the flowers, mm -hmm. or we could focus on that third face up top. No, yeah, I'm just. Um, I'd love to work on that face. Working if you don't out mind. these, like that, those like really defined textures in the pillow, and then I'm just gonna move on to the face. So. Okay. This is just a little detour. But yeah, I will not be lingering here. Don't worry. <laughs> yeah. This is where you know, just under the the time constraints that we have. Mm -hmm. um, oh my God. Wanting to focus on the the big. The big eye catchers. Mm -hmm. They're in a sec. <laughs> Those dresses are looking so nice. Thank you.
Oh, cool. Didi says, thank you for choosing this subject. It gives off a very positive message. I see these women as people of importance. <laughs> Great. Oh, yeah, the, <laughs> the disparity in rendering is, goes really hard right now. <laughs> 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 Love that. <laughs> um, all right. I do that a lot with my digital work, like I'll zoom in on something and be like rendering that crap out of it for like a long time and then I zoom out and like everything else still is like very conceptual and like sketchy, it's very fun. Yeah, and that, that can be very natural for studies because in a study, the idea is that you're studying something, you're trying to learn something, mm -hmm. and so maybe some things are just scribbled in because you need context but you don't need to fully flesh it out and then you focus on the thing that you're trying to develop. Yeah. So it's very natural, certainly. So it's, I understand, it's not fair for me to push you around. <laughs> and yet, zap. here I am, pushing you around. Our electric collar, zap, zap. Zap, zap. Angela Gale said, this painting reminds me of the book Pride and Prejudice. <laughs> Good one. If that's the case, then which one is... I don't even know the main the female character's name. Um, it's Kira Knightley. <laughs> which I know is <laughs> shameful because the book is, is so much better. But Understandable. Angela, which one... For Sense and Sensibility, I have not read that one. I did read Pride and Prejudice, really good. Um, which one of them would be which? Sarah Price said, I love how luminous they are, the lightness of their dresses. It's like they are candles in a dark room. <laughs> mm. Romanticizing the painting now, are we? <laughs> Tim said, my favorite brush is the Filbert. It's a great brush. Great all-around brush. It's the old faithful. Tim said, I'm, I did not start my painting. I am out of some paint. I use Academy oils. They are very expensive. So will you be painting today or will you not be able to paint, Tim?
May, have you learned anything from this master copy study? Um, nothing I can put into words, but it's definitely just adding to like my visual library of things I will be able to look at and understand and replicate. Especially like a lot of the looseness of the brushstrokes and how form can be defined through like... So like take like this area for example, like here. Like you can tell this section of the cushion is like coming out just because of this very simple edge and then gradient kind of here. Um, uh -huh. And it's like so simple. <laughs> it's like... I don't know. I think it's making me realize how like simple some forms can be and still like read as like very definitive structures. Um, I know that's like very vague and wordy. That's like where I am right now. Um, yeah. I'm sure like if I take the time to like kind of look at it and think about it a little bit, like kind of process it instead of, because right now I'm very much in the moment, like thinking about what I'm doing right now. Mm -hmm. um, so if I have some time later to sit down and kind of think about it. Um, yeah, definitely a lot of that kind of simplification. It'll hopefully help me see things a bit more clearly in the future. So what I'm hearing is, how could you ask me a question like that? I'm painting. <laughs> <laughs> Message it's, it's, received. <laughs> um, yeah, it's like rain check on answer. Yeah. I guess mostly about like simplification though. Um, mm -hmm. That's cool. Like, Thank yes, you. there are these whole women their whole figures and their whole bodies in these like very fancy dresses, but they are very easily like readable in Sargent's painting. Just for despite all that complexity, and it's like, how does he do it with such like loose brushstrokes and such? Like, how does he economize his brushstrokes in a way that allows these things to emerge? That is the wrong color. Okay. <laughs> Eric said, hearing the word luminous, I do wonder now how that particular drawing room, the irony, was lit. It seems odd the more you stare at it. Yeah. <laughs> and then Sarah Price added, I wonder if he purposely painted the background darker than it was so they would stand out more and be the focus. Yeah, I've actually been looking at that too. And I, that's my guess as well. Um, and it could also just be the way that the lighting was set up, where where you sort of have two environments of sorts, like yeah. you know this there's an entire let's call it a foreground with a couch and the women and then the background. It could be much further away. Um, or it could just be that the, the light just completely blocks it off. And so that could be kind of how that, that feeling was created. And then maybe he accentuated it on top of that. But for those shadows in the background, you would, you would kind of, yeah, you'd kind of look for, or almost expect darker shadows in the women. But then you also figure everything is, is this reflective light material and so everything that has a shadow is being reflected so the light is bouncing back from a well-lit like the well-lit couch into the, the women's dresses and so that also contributes to the just the luminousness of everything and it's interesting that he chose that green pillow and then also nestled in the um, the flowers with those same tones. It's kind of like a way to, because there's such a significant separation from the figures in the background, using that green actually in that space as it's lit and then using the, like on the pillow and then the, uh, the flowers there to break it up. It kind of like you have some parts that glue the painting together and then other parts that really stand out. All compositional decisions 
so that our eyes rest on the things that Sergeant wants us to rest on and to get that, that entire feeling. It all comes back to values, edges, and color. Like if you break it down looking at that, that green pillow on the left side, squint your eyes, the values are much more in line with the values of the background. The color is much more in line with the colors in the background. A little bit different, so it still comes forward. It still belongs in that space with them. But it's so married to the background. Like it kind of just, looking at that pillow, it just drops away into the dark. And that was also another edge decision. Like, just going over to the reference. If you look at the edge of where the green pillow meets the the background, like that dark shadow behind the ladies, it's really it's a really soft gradient. So that's a so as as the pillow is receding, it's getting darker. The color is getting more like the background, and then the edge is soft. All three of those things are communicating depth. And then just next to it is the sharp, crisp edges of the middle sister on the left side which have bright values, which are stark contrast with the background, sharp edges, and then that warm yellow color scheme. So now he's using all three values, edges, and color to create a jump forward. And that also just helps accentuate the feeling of her turning on her side and kind of leaning in towards her sisters. I hope that made sense. And Tim asked, what are you cleaning your brushes with as you change colors, May? Um, I think it's linseed oil. Yeah. <laughs> Not super fancy. It is 1050. Okay. That works. Probably going to be a little all over the place for the rest yeah. of the stream. <laughs> I've zoomed out. All right, cool. <laughs> I'm kind of just trying to put in those like much darker values with kind of like harsher edges um, so I can just pull the figures a little forward from the background. So 
So I'm kind of just gonna like outline them in a way. Go around the painting. Is it just me, or do I see your signature already put in? Here? No. Oh. Is that where you put it? No, this oh. just looks like a scribble of a Z, and I noticed it earlier. Oh. Where do you see it? I was seeing it in the top left corner. There's like, yeah, right there. Yeah. And oh. then right to the left of it is oh, an M that's obscured by a big paint stroke. I don't see the, oh, here? No, it's right next to the Z. You're seeing like the right side of the M. I don't see it. <laughs> hmm. Oh yeah, I do have to put in my signature at some point. I forgot. No, I did not intentionally sign it last time. Yet. This time though. No, Becky just jumped in. Hey, Becky. Hello. You missed all the work I did before this. <laughs> it's okay. Ah, thank you, Angela. Angela answered my earlier question about which one, who would be what, who would be who in Pride and Prejudice. Angela said, if you follow the book, the second child would be the main character. But I think the one in the middle is Elizabeth Bennet. You can see it. Yeah. Becky just asked, how are you? And to that, Becky, I will tell you that um, I am feeling <laughs> golden barack red. And actually, since we were kind of wrapping up this live stream, would love to hear everyone's thoughts. How are you feeling now that we're coming to the end? Just use the, the link. Um, let us know what you're feeling in terms of the old Holland color chart. So Becky, the real question is, how are you feeling? <laughs> <laughs> Let us know.
Eric has shifted from cobalt green to the old Holland golden green. Let's take a look. Oh yeah, much more golden. Kind of reminds me of grass being illuminated by a golden hour. And then Becky said uh, C2O2 dioxazine mauve. Oh, I love that color. Yes. Mmm. <laughs> Wow, that, that really, uh, that gets dark, doesn't it? Yes, it's like a bruise. Such a good color for like night skies or like colorful shadows or anything. Mm. <laughs> I like it a lot. Oh, hey, Kara. Kara said, stopping by to say hello. The painting looks amazing. <laughs> Hi, thank you. Thank you. Well, you know, all the hard work I've done, you know. <laughs> <laughs> Sarah Price says, Kara, let us know how you're feeling using an old Holland paint color. Sarah Price said, feeling blue lake. Let's look it up. Sounds pleasant. It's going to be messing around with colors for a little back here because I want to. Mm. It's a really vivid blue. <laughs> the lake colors seem to be like really saturated with pigment. Whoa, what just happened? <laughs> what? Just got one all chunky on your background. Yeah. Is that some blue in there? Mm -hmm. Relatively? Mm -hmm. No, it's blue straight from the palette. So. <laughs> oh, was it really? Yeah. Oh, wow. You just decided to switch things up, huh? Yeah. I was like, it's going to be dark and there's not going to be much going on. I can at least make it very aggressively colorful. Mm. That's always fun. See? Wow. <laughs> wow. That's fun. Ooh. It's spunky. Whoa. That's a lot. There is blue What's in there. What's happening? <laughs> there is blue What's in there. What's going on? Two minutes to finish and May just comes out of nowhere. <laughs> this is a surprise. Classic May behavior. <laughs> and we all wash with bated breath. There's like flowers, so. <laughs> Eric said, trust the process. <laughs> Tim said the blue looks very pretty. It does. Thank you. I like it. I think it's interesting. And Kara said, feeling kind of feeling cobalt green deep. Let's see, let's see. Huh. That color has got a lot, a lot going on in there. It's like a, this cobalt green deep, it's like a, it's a very blue and gray kind of a green. Mm -hmm. It's very nice. Very rich. What? Edie said, what color is sleepiness, please? Well, Phoebe chimed in earlier. Um, hi, Mr. Rainbow, glad to have you. Uh, he said blue-gray was the color that she was feeling. And when I asked her why, she said it was because she was feeling tired. This is my favorite part of every live stream. 
It's like the very end where I just kind of go crazy. It's like <laughs> so enjoyable. Because like I can't even explain what I'm doing, but it's just like I know it's like perplexing. And like Daniel's always like, why? Why is there always <laughs> so much left in the last 10 minutes? It is 11.01. No! Wait. <laughs> I still have to sign this. Dun, dun, dun. We're talking about signing as like an after sergeant or something, right? Like, oh yeah, maybe, like maybe sergeant. sergeant. Ha, 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 ha. That was that joke I couldn't pick up <laughs> for a long time. That was pretty funny. Um, re referring to the mauve color. Use a new brush. Becky said it's perfect for nighttime, right? About to meditate myself to sleep with that color. Ooh. Sounds nice. Wait. Eric said sepia tones can make for very interesting dreamscapes. Mm. You've yet to meditate. Watch me sign the painting. <laughs> <laughs> no, I don't know, man. I mean, it's past, it's past the hour, you know. I mean, this is true. What are we going to do? It's a tall ask, I know. Why is this brush so soft? It's like not doing what it's supposed to be doing. Okay. <laughs> Audio on. Mm -hmm. um, Judy said, emerald green with envy. Mm. Oh, ah, aha. Uh -huh. What? She's envious. Give me <laughs> a second. I was like, emerald green with envy, where is this on the color chart? <laughs> There's like bright red in there and I want to put it in. It's like this scarlet orange. Hopefully that works. Tim um. said, thank you, Daniel and May. This is very thumbs up. <laughs> <laughs> Appreciate it. All right, May, it's 11.03. The, the gates are slowly shutting. <laughs> Eric asks, have you tried making paints yet? I have not. Nope. Um. What is that? A fan brush I see? Indeed. We always like to clarify that May is really just softening the surface. You can see as she's working in that background how all the little highlights from the the light like bouncing off of the brush strokes. And she just kind of took that out. So now it's pushed back much further. Oh, a little hit of red I see. All right, all right. <laughs> Glenn said, thank you, you too. You're welcome. Emma Louise said, splatoonery to the finish line. Shwoosh. Shwoosh. Yes, you get the vibe. <laughs> Like, what's going on, May? It's, it's like, you know, it's right when it gets to the end, you suddenly start working, like, three times as fast. Because it's the end. It's a, <laughs> it's a circular logic thing. It's a day in the life. That was not necessary. Um. This, this reminds me of that, um, just that simple idea. It's like... If you lived as if you had no tomorrow, <laughs> what would you do? <laughs> and May this. is painting like that right now. She's like, I'm never going to touch this painting again. I want to do everything I can. It's so literally what it is. I don't even know what's over there. I'm just painting it. <laughs> um, yeah, that's like... There's some form in there. Some chunk. Going out with a real bang, huh? Yeah. Do not go gently into that good night, you know what I'm saying? Mm. 
I know what you're saying. <laughs> Some good stuff right there. Anyone know the reference to that? There's two answers that are acceptable. <laughs> acceptable. We have standards. My goodness, what is going on over there? Sarah Price productivity said Dylan you've seen Thomas. Century. Is Dylan Thomas one of the acceptable answers? I have to look it up. <laughs> Probably. Yes. Sarah Price has been Sarah Price just quite she just erudite, knows so. the information. It's amazing. <laughs> She's on it. I'll just say something and then Sarah Price is always verifying it. It's great. Eric said it was a poet. Yeah. <laughs> Word. Thank you, Eric. I want I want to put this here. Whoa. Maybe that's what we should do one of these live streams is like I just react to every stroke, <laughs> make sound effects with everyone. Why? <laughs> Stop. <laughs> I'm gonna use a different one because it's all like dark. Um, so I don't want to get that all over the figures. That would make me very sad. Mm. So just I just watch wanna, you move your head. Yes, yeah, so I don't want to be very sad. So I'm not doing that. I don't know why I explained that. It's like kind of silly, goofy. Emma said, I love caramel custard, uh, sorry. I love caramel mustard color at the moment. That bit just covered up. I could roll around in caramel wheat, mustard, muted, yellow, whatever. Sigh. Sigh. <laughs> uh, and Glenn said, I've, I've been here listening and dealing with family drama. Oh. oh, I'm sorry. Well, thank you for uh, staying tuned in. Yeah. Hopefully... Hopefully that gets right. resolved. Yeah. That doesn't sound very funny. And Emma is now contributing to the uh, to the sounds. <coughs> Stop! Why? <laughs> Nani. <laughs> <laughs> All right, that's enough. Oh, I have to sign it. That's not enough. That's right. It's I lied. Eleven oh eight May. May. What do I sign it? What is this? It's, it's your it's your study, you know. This is not me signing it. Yeah, I was gonna say. What are you doing? Wait, but do pick a spot so I can zoom in on it. Uh. Are the bottom right corner? Where so the flowers are. The bottom right corner, yeah, probably. Okay. Okay. Moving on over. All right, I'm zoomed in. Okay. I should use bright blue. Bright blue? That in the background with reckless abandon. Actually, no, I'm going to not do that because it'll look ugly. Um, red? I think red might be like this color. I can't really see it. Maybe I'll put blue on top. Ooh, that'd be crazy. And really ugly, so I'm not gonna do that. Mm. What's that? Alrighty. It's visible. He said Dylan Thomas is whom Bob Dylan got his last name from. Huh. <laughs> put blue in there too because I felt like it. That is kind of. Mm. Just had to put that blue in. I don't know how I feel about that, to be honest. But. If you had to describe how you feel about that using an old Holland color, <laughs> bright blue. <laughs> so is that is that kind of a nice feeling though? Yeah. Okay. Using that negative space, I see. Yeah. You do a little outlining, so the signature comes out a bit. Oh, that is nice. I do think I enjoy that. I do think I enjoy that. <laughs> <laughs> Love the commitment. You see what kind of person I am with these. It's like, speak move so, your head, move your head. Speak so carefully. Because I want to say what I mean as precisely as I can. 
Sarah Price said, May has come a long way from trying to hide her signature in the painting, lol. <laughs> we did it, we're done. <laughs> <laughs> Almost. Emma said, hey, great job. Thanks for sharing. Glenn said, looks amazing. Thank you. Edie said, amazing yeah. job. <laughs> Becky's confirmed you've come a long way. <laughs> this is great, May. Thank you so much. <laughs> Thank you. No problem. Wait, I'm gonna p there are like highlights in here. They're really juicy and I didn't see Wait, them. What? No. No. It's not on screen. <laughs> <laughs> okay, okay, I'll do more. Just for the fans. I make them like bright blue. That would go crazy. This is the chasing May around the, the canvas the again. The final juice section. <laughs> Where May adds all the juice to the painting. The last juice squeeze. The last juice. Emma said, yum, not monochromatic, but still mellow. Mr. Rainbow said, looks pretty. <laughs> Thank you. And Kara said, 10 out of 10 stars. Star emoji, superstar. What was that you just did? No. <laughs> <laughs> she just pumped her fist. She was happy. I had both of them. It was crazy. Guys May is it. very happy, everybody. <laughs> wow. I got to tell you that we're ending like 15 minutes before we actually do so that we can watch you just suddenly transform into whatever is happening right now. Wait, actually? What? Wait, what do you mean? I'm saying I'm gonna do that in the future. Oh. But as for now, we are 12 minutes over. Okay. I was like, did you actually like just prank me so I'd like go into speed mode? Cause that'd be like really ingenious. Like everyone's already complimenting you. <laughs> Everyone thinks it's done, but you're haven't put the brush down yet. Everyone's like, can she stop? <laughs> what is she doing? Everyone wants to go to bed. <laughs> yeah, she's crazy for that one. And she that won't one. stop working, and now she's working on the face, and it's not even on the screen. <laughs> I do. <laughs> uh, Chaos incarnate. <laughs> that's pretty funny. Okay, 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 we're, we're, we're done. Do it. Put the brush down. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna leave that chunky. I like that. Um, That's great. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you very much for that. Yeah, yeah. I thought it might be enjoyed. <laughs> there you are. That's a lot nicer than last time. <laughs> Glenn said, dedicated fan time. Debbie said, gorgeous. Aww. Becky said, she could fiddle on it all night. Yes, I'm, she could. Hey, hey. I'm moving it. I'm, <laughs> I'm, I'm softening the edge. Stop it. <laughs> no. Okay, okay, okay. All the sound effects again. <laughs> oh, why? I'm giving her a nice jawline, okay? Like, the essentials. <laughs> the essentials. The essentials. I'll put this back. Tim said, just got to stop, because if not, you'll just be there all day. Pretty sure I talked about the monkeys. You know, <laughs> monkeys don't know when to stop. Yeah. Monkey mode. <laughs> May like goes into monkey is. mode at 10.55. <laughs> That's like the chapter heading. Yeah. Becky said, it's gorgeous. Tim Johnson gave a thumbs up, dynamite, and a heart. Wow. Aww. That's incredible. Thank you. Greatly inspired to do more from Eric. Ooh. And Emma said, when Edwardian lace eats a canvas, chomp, chomp. I don't know what that means, but I think that's a huge compliment. I mean, if you want to eat it, that's pretty good. <laughs> like, <laughs> Okay, the last thing I want to do is just give everyone the final look. Like straight on. It's going to be a bit choppy right now as I move our tripod. But... Uh, you know, sometimes with the distortion and things, things can look kind of funny. So there you are. There's the painting in all its glory. That's a lot of emojis from yeah. Mr. Rainbow. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that does look nice on camera. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. Thank you, guys. All right. So next week, I will be doing a live stream of painting Carter. 
And uh, here's the reference I'll be using Aww. of the beautiful boy. And uh, yeah, so it'll be like a three by three, super small, very simple painting so that my friend can have it with him um, as he's working. So hopefully I'll see you all there. It's going to be at 7 p.m. October 2nd. So on a Word. Sunday evening. Mm -hmm. We'd love to have you all there. And uh, yeah, it'll be fun to paint on camera and mm -hmm. hang out with you all on the other side. Mm -hmm. All right. And take care, everyone, and sleep well. Thank you. Take care. Bye-bye. <laughs> Bye. -bye. Bye.